all right what's up everybody it's lids and we are back for some more pyre community right now which means of course some good old-fashioned multiplayer pyre featuring none other than the members of the right club discord server the place for all things multiplayer pyre if you are interested in getting more involved in multiplayer pyre then that's the place to be oh and artemis foul once again beats me to the punch he has won the race and for discord as well what an absolute pro but those of you in chat you are not off the hook no, 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 because you see the red circle with the white L below chat. You click on that, you will find all the various requests that you can make today, including things ranging from selecting players, exiles, masteries, talismans, songs, arenas, even titan stars are all fair game. So, without further ado, let's hop into versus mode here. We'll set ourselves back to our defaults, and we'll get things started. So let us know, chat, if there's anyone who would like to begin today. Use songs to get things started. Okay, okay. Grand Ceremony. Sure thing. There it is. Let me get Steam Friends up as well. There that is. What happened to vids? Want happened to vids? Only see lid stream. Four, I, you lost me. Four? Are you okay, Core? Core, take your time. <laughs> Speak your mind. <laughs> but, uh, you know, lids and vids used to be great. Oh, man. Confusion of the highest order. Now it's just lids. I guess so. I guess so. Alas, alas, we are looking for some people to hop in here to get us started today. Is there anyone who would like to do the honors? Anora's up. Okay. Let's get Anora in here then. Invite sent to you. Yeah, it was a it was a brutal, brutal civil war between lids and fids. But at the end of the day, only one could emerge victorious. All right, we have Anora in here. Let me set her up. Anyone else who would like to face off against Anora? And by the way, happy Father's Day to you all. Or I forget to mention it. Just do a quick... Oh, let me see if... Remote play. There we go. Now you have controls. And does this look right? There we are. Okay. So Nora's all set and ready to go. Who would you like to be today, Nor? Nightwings? Player two? Okay. Oh, did I start sending you up for player one? I might have started typing your name for player one, but I can type in for player two. That works too. There you are. Okay. Nightwings sigil. There we go. So we're looking for one more then to face off against Nor to get things started today. Anyone who would like to do those honors. I mean, once upon a time, it did seem as though perhaps we had a, a bit of a thing going here to start off the right nights with a certain matchup. Tended to lead to some pretty dramatic showdowns. Baylor. Baylor will hop in. Awesome. It's been a little while, Baylor. A little while. Let's get you in. Let's see. Steams does not yet acknowledge your existence but hopefully that will change set you up on stream first in that case nice i assume fate for you failure oh also did i jump into discord did i forget to jump into discord i forgot to jump into discord didn't i i did i did here i am rocky like a hurricane Okay, let's see. Let's, I assume, switch failure over to the fate. All right, and is there anything that we would like to see for this first one, chat? Or we, I mean, we have some songs already. 
Fire's favorite dad, mainly? I mean, he does have a son. Sort of. Kind of. A little bit. So I, I guess yeah, that's... Yeah, counts as his son. It's, it's his name, just Junior. Yeah. I mean, is it technically... I mean, it's like his root. Is that not technically just an extension of Manly himself? I don't know. I, I guess I didn't really anticipate that we would be questioning the existence of Saps at the very beginning of the day today. I'm not sure I'm ready for this, to be honest with you. Oh, also, why is it... Oh. Now, okay, I see why. Because Failure wasn't in yet. And he's requesting to view the broadcast, which is his way of saying, Lids, I am ready. So the invite has been sent, but now I need to... Hold on. Make this go away. There we go. <laughs> Some things may or may not have happened. But we don't have to talk about them. We don't have to talk about them. We do potentially have some other things to talk about. Somewhat independent from that. But, uh, depends who's in chat right now. Greetings, exiles. You stand upon the Isle of Kelma. Here, one of you may walk the path to glory. Cling to whatever shred of hope you have. The fate stand for Oh, I, I did not see the exiles request. Hold on. I totally missed it. Let me take a quick look here. What did we have? Nor had an Exiles request. Manly and Volfred. Okay. On, uh, both teams have both Manly and Volfred, or like one of you does Volfred, one of you does Manly. What's up, Embaric? How are you? Just getting things started. As Failer starts things off with Almer on his side. Like, is this a Volfred versus Manly kind of thing, or is this Volfred plus Manly against Volfred plus Manly? No, it looks like it's both. Anor says it's she'll both take both. both teams. So we've got a quad sap right going on here. Mm hmm. Yeah, so in Barrack, I, I didn't check. Is Arumi in chat right now? Because if not, at least. If a roomie does show up later today, he has some serious explaining to do right now. <laughs> so we that may be a topic of discussion later on today. And Rumi, if you are in chat, you know exactly what we're talking about. So if both players are getting both Volfred and Manly, then of course that means that there's just one character that is entirely up to them to choose, and Failure has already claimed that character, that being Almer. We do have, yes, that is true. Anora requested two songs, so we will have one more before Ambaric's winner's choice kicks in here. Does that mean it's gonna be the winner of this one that chooses, or is it gonna be the winner of the next one that chooses? That is a difficult question to answer. <laughs> Stakes are cooling down. I mean, you could, you could have that be the case for the one after this. Exploding Volfred. Okay, so Anor has also taken a non-sap in the first spot. So she's now looking at Manly and Volfred in the last two spots. We switch it around the order of requests between Anor's second song and Ampheric's winner's choice. I mean, the thing is, if Anor wins, then it could be one in the same. Well, we'll play it by ear, I guess, a little bit. We can answer those questions after the end of this, right? Maybe the stakes are heating up after all. All right, so there is the Nutrition Stick Fulfred and Anor Classic. Baylor now taking the second of his saps, you wouldn't.
All right, so Failure's all set and ready to go. Double Sap plus Savage. And Aura's gonna be Double Sap plus Harp. Uh, everyone, to answer your question, Ambaric. But here we go with our first Rather of the Night. Failure teleports the orb and just barely avoids the banishment there. But does eventually go down to the sapling, I believe. Here comes Pamitha for an ore. Trying to create some space and... Ooh, just threads the needle with that throw. Or blocked a little bit by those imps, although Failure's still able to teleport to it. Banishes one defender with his banishing throws. But does go down with Almer. Pamitha. Goes down to the sapling as well. I would say we'd expect to see this as a primarily defensive matchup, given how many saps we have on both sides. But both players starting off things aggressively here. Almer trying to once again banish defenders with his throws, but this time has an open look at the pyre. But cuts it a little bit short here, just 11 damage on that throw. Double banishment there, both Almer and Pamitha. Technically, Almer with a quicker respawn time, so he will return first, but it's Nor on the orb here. Here is Pamitha. Sacrificing her teammate. And banishing Almer. But failure with it back here, well shielded. Failure losing everyone, but Almer does return just in time to teleport to the orb. Banishes one defender with a throw. Has it back. But goes down to Pamitha. His throw, which looks like he did get off, just falls slightly short there. But otherwise, might have been a score even if Almer got banished at the end of that play. An ore with a switch, and the throw does land. Also cutting it a little bit short here for 15 in this instance. Almer goes down to the sapling. This is a lot of saps indeed. You are not wrong. Pushing the limits a little bit here. Oh, and that is a quick throw from Anor for 25. From that range, might have also been unblockable. As that is sometimes the case for Saps, depending on where exactly they're throwing it from. Oh, Fred with that extra blink ability. Nearly makes it into the pyre, but does get stopped. Now Ulmer for failure. Trying to be mindful of that harp cast, but down Almer goes. Same can be said for Pamitha. Almer returns. Banishes one, but gets banished. Old Fred. Has that blink lined up pretty well here, but Failure shuts it down. Almer tries to speed away, but Anor cuts him off. Pamitha. Oh, the quick throw. Full 25 and all. This isn't even their final form, by the way. But Failure's permanently, or completely banished until Alma returns. He is back, but this is an or Oh, and that was a close call for Failure. Of course, both players have saps, and therefore both players may have rekindling, but if an or is to score again, may test that theory. Oh, look at that last second save from Baylor. Can banish with the throws even if Anor shields, but that sapling is enough to stop Almer from blinking in. Oh, and look at that. Speaking of blinks, the throw off target though from Anor. Almer, rush down. Pamitha, switches, throw, banish before Anor can get it off. Almer can't avoid the exploding sapling. Pamitha again. Her and Volfred. Volfred thinking about lining up the blink straight into the pyre. Has that extra range from Nutrition Stick. And maybe that was the idea with Pamitha. Trying to push him a little bit further, but she sacrifices him. This is Manly. Does land with the throw, and there is the much anticipated 100 rekindling. So this one's far from over. Baylor now on his second life bar, Nor still on her first. But did Anor take the same quantity of rekindling that Failer took? Perhaps not. Does make it a little bit difficult to gauge where things currently stand. Palmer vanishes. The orb, can he pick it up? Just barely. 
This throw, oh, we can't get it off in time. Hamatha. Waiting to get some reinforcements. They're here now. Oh, but she goes down nonetheless. Almer finds an opportunity. 17 this time round. Almer stops Pamatha. Has the orb. Banishes one sap. But gets banished by the second. Pamatha. Switches in. Quick throw. Oh, and it sneaks past the defender. They're not quite full damage. Just 21. Not 25. Oh, and Anor tries to blink straight in with Volfred, but unsuccessful this time. Thaler had it blocked. Amatha back on it for Anor, though. Down she goes. Thaler has thus far been focusing on, yes, attacks with Almer. Not much offensively from his saps. So I was a little surprised as he started to make a move with one of them, but no, I think it's likely to be more Almer in the future. But it's Anor following up with another 25 damage throw here. And that has been the difference maker. Almer banishes one sap, but it's not enough to clear out the space to get a score here as Anor has recovered. Failure getting more aggressive with the saps now. As with just 54 Pyre Life on his second round of Pyre Life, we've already seen his rekindling. Perhaps we'll see Failure mix up his strategy a little bit more here. Palmer vanishes, but gets banished. Amtha retreats. Gets the salmon back with Luminous Idol. Switches, oh, and look for the quick blink in, but wasn't quite lined up properly. Amatha again. Oh no, she switches, but the throw is off target. Almer, looking for that opening. Can he find it? He cannot. Amatha waits for the saps to return. The failure, trying to put on some additional pressure, but no only counter attack now. Oh, look at that. Another personnel kid blinks to the other side of the pyre to throw it in. Almer bounces off the imp and onto the defender for the banishment, setting up the full 20 damage throw. Hamatha blocked. Almer banished. Double sap banishment. But Pamatha returns, and it's just Manly back to defend for Failer. Oh, but the throw is off for Anor. And Failer has it back. Banishes Pamatha. But gets banished with Almer. Oh, and no one to stop Anor here! Uncontested 25 damage throw, dropping Failer down to 21. And remember, this is Sailor Failer's second life bar. So he has already had his rekindling. And therefore, the Saps can finish it. G G. Thus end this night's proceedings. And Barrack, sometimes, sometimes I just um, it's just my hope and dream that maybe if I don't acknowledge it, people will stop playing it. People will stop doing it. That's the dream. Hi, uh, Barrack. Uh. All right, so here's the thing. Let's see. We had the double song request, right? We had the double song request. One was Anor for... What song was it that you requested for your second one, Anor? The other one was, and Barrack said, winner's choice. The thing is that Anor is the winner. So does that mean, do we just do Anor's certain plan? Do we just do Anor's certain plan? Okay, gotcha. Certain plan is Anor's choice. But then she'll switch her... So, it's Anor's choice because she was the winner as per uh, the request from Anbaric. But then after this one, Anor will revise her personal request to be something different, if that makes any sense at all. I got you. I got you. 
So the songs are all set here, but let us know if there's anything else that we would like to see for this next one. If not, then of course we can just move forward with the song and nothing else. That works. We'll just have them take whatever they want to take for their team compositions. So let's jump in. The fate shall now face so we're at the book. And for Failer, he does have one or two team compositions that he is certainly a fan of breaking out here on the book. We shall see if this is one of those occasions, as he goes with the Titan Tooth Dalbert, so he will stun anyone that he jumps into. And Inorco's Ninja Stowaway here with a quick throwing talisman. Baylor, when we saw him take the Kerr in the first spot, you wondered if maybe he was thinking triple Kerr, but no, goes for a an imp in that second spot. Anor back with Nutrition Sick Full Fred here. And okay, so Failer goes double Kerr, not triple this time. As that is one of his go-tos that he sometimes breaks out here in the book. And Anor finishes things off with Pamitha. So let us begin. There is the quick hopping Dalbert hopping in here for 20 with that plunge, though he had Titan Tooth, not Prayer Beads, which means he is out for this round. Ruki, however, does have Prayer Beads if he is to score. And he will. So that means Failure's still at full strength here. Oh, and it looks like Dalbert had it, but Anor disrupted that with her teleportation over to the orb with the stowaway. But Failer follows up with another Delbert plunge here. Stowaway beats Ruki to the orb this time round. Trying to ninja her way around somehow. Gets that one past Failer's seemingly well positioned imp that time. But Failer just hops straight on in with Delbert this time. And that means one more of those would reduce Anora's pyre life to zero unless she took a little bit of rekindling on that Volfred there. Oh, but not this time for Failer. Gets stopped just short of making it into the pyre. Pamitha switches into the stowaway with her throw using Pamitha's salute. And the stowaway's throw lands for 20. Anor stops what would have been Failer's attack there with his cur. Dalbert blocked, but he has Titan Tooth, so Anor's stunned here. A little bit of time for Failer to work with. And that allows him to get in the plunge here, and there is 10 rekindling. So a second life bar for Anor, but it's a small one. Anor continues to whittle away, though, at Failure's Pyre, so she needs two scores. Failure needs one. Technically, Failure doesn't matter who he scores with. He should still have enough damage, as long as it's not a very quick throw. So, wait, oh, she has a little bit of space to work with here. And suddenly, it's a sudden death match here. One score, either player would do the trick. Who will it be? 
It's a free orb. Anor gets it back, but gets banished. Failure now. Down goes Dalbert. Hamatha. Switches into Volfred. Other side of the pyre. Oh, not quick enough, though. Stillway tries to teleport to it, but gets banished. Failure hops over the defender and in for the winning plunge. GG. The ceremony is complete. Well played indeed. <laughs> Nor, not a fan of the book. All right, so this one, we have a song. It's going to be a Nor's request of her choosing this time round. But other than that, anything else is up for grabs. Path to Glory Acoustic. Oh, okay. Hold on. That might mean it's band camp time. Let's see. Let's see. Can I track that one down? Path to Glory Acoustic. Ah, no worries, Steel Wolf. No worries. Let's see. Half the glory. Do they have? They have the other mandolin versions on Bandcamp. It's just the original soundtrack. Half the glory. I see the original, but that's that's something we can get whenever. I'm not seeing the alternative versions. This is the original soundtrack. We have not seen the alternate version. I mean, we could try just going straight with Tariq Bot. I'm not sure how much I trust him. But we can try. Let's see. Mmm, I'm afraid not. Faylor found it, though. Nice. Oh, hold on. One moment, please. There we go. There it is. All right, let's turn off the in-game music, though. Okay. Very nice. And we'll have a never to return after that. They did have it, though? Yeah, I couldn't track it down on whatever page I was looking at, but... I'm sure they probably have the other uh, versions of the Pyre soundtrack on there somewhere as well. I just did not locate them. So, let us hop in here, as I believe that's the only thing we have now remaining for this one. Oh, okay, both versions never to return after this. Gotcha, gotcha. But that is, that'll be for next time. Okay, so it is the Cairn, of course, well known for a, a certain setup or two. One that I'm not sure we see Failure take all that often, but it's always that possibility. Can't rule it out. Thanks for something, by Steel Wolf. It is a right wisp stowaway so she'll pass the orb whenever she gets banished with it which we have seen players start to do more of with a certain setup not the one that i was anticipating that we might see but gives us perhaps a decent sense as what failure might be intending to do with character number two and three here And in Or's case, oh, going for the legendary Savage Talisman, Kalimur's Anklet, you don't see that one all that often. It means her cast will randomly bounce off of objects. Certainly chaotic, but a little bit hard to ensure that you'll get value out of it, and so not oftentimes one that we see people opt to take. 
Then again, of all the arenas in which to use it, with all the bouncing hockey pucks, this might be one of the better ones to try it out in. This and maybe Isle of Kalimer. Alright, and Failer goes for high damage there on Gilman at the cost of reduced hope. And it is a power casting headwind in the second spot there for an ore. It's and it's a second worm in that last spot for failure, and that is what I anticipated we might see when we saw the auto passing stowaway, as it gives you a pseudo infiniworm setup potentially, which is likely what failure is looking for here. Alright, and then it is a webbed lanthorn Jody in the last spot for an ore. Here we go. Immediately, the stowaway goes down, leaving Fela with just one worm, but that means it will. The worms will just keep on coming back. Although, oh, not anyone back to intercept unless he does get that savage coming back just in time and sets up for the quick counterattack here. 25 damage on that worm plunge. Gilman goes to the throw. Good for 10. Did see an ore take some starting pyre life. I imagine that was from Jody, as she has a mastery that does that. And so an ore still at exactly 100 pyre life here, even after those scores. Now, Failer, hopping straight on in with the Savage for 20. No prayer beans on that Savage, though, so the Soe will be gone for this round. Edwin, banished. Jody, pressing forward here. Avoids banishment there, knocks back one defender, but gets blocked by the second. Gets the orb back. And does eventually make it in here for 30 on that plunge. Taylor teleports, but still gets banished by the bouncing cast. Oh, it worked. But here come the infinite worms. So Deluge speeds on in for 15. Still away. First the orb and first into the pyre for 20 damage there. Deluge wins the race, but goes down. Gilman straight in and has that extra damage on the Astral Eye Talisman. Good for 23, which drops an ore down to 22. So if Failer gets Seize Chance on one of his worms, which I know he has on at least one of them, then that does give him enough damage, but he is defenseless at the moment until the Stowaway returns. Here she is against Hedwin. Hedwin down against now the other Stowaway for an ore who gets sniped. Jody returns. Over to the stowaway. She plunges for 20 for an ore. Stowaway for Failure. To Gilman. He's shoulder smashed. Down goes Jody. As well as Hedwin. An ore defenseless here. Failure with time. Throws it in for 20. But that's not enough. An ore holding on here with two pyre life. An ore with an opening. Little bit of damage, 13. But an ore did not go all the way down on the left side for the leech as well, which could have helped out in this instance, as she is obviously on still low pyre life, and thus one score from failure would be enough to finish her off. But an ore up to the task defensively here at the moment. But no margin for error, as that's the last of her exiles. Oh, but look at this! The last second save! Stowaway versus Stowaway. Fela wins out, but Jody has returned for an ore. But here come the Infinite Worms. 
Jody sidesteps one worm. Looking to knock them back, but instead gets stunned. And goes down. Still way trying to cause some trouble, but Failer has the orb back. And speeds in for the winning plunge. GG. <laughs> no worries, Anor. Guys, this Infiniworms thing, it's kind of strong. All right, and we did have a couple of song requests, actually, for our next couple of matches. So enough of that nonsense, Tariq bot, because I believe it was... Is it Never to Return? Both versions? Okay, so we'll have Fate version and Nightwing's version. So that would be in this direction. There we go. Okay, let's turn back on the in-game music. There we are. Anything else we'd like for this one? Any thoughts? Oh, Anor? I never. There is no way we would ever ban Infiniworms. Not gonna happen. I won't allow it. I think you guys just need to, um, you just need to master the Infinite Worms. Objectively the best team it may be. But you see, you adopted the Infinite Worms. I was born in the Infinite Worms. It's not actually as strong as it as it appears, guys. Right, what? Who said that? Who said that? Who who dared to say that? All right, but if there is anything else we'd like to see for this next one, let us know. We have songs all set and ready to go, but outside of that, nothing else has been claimed here. Oh, well. At least until Lenore turns customized off, that of course means randomized Exiles, Masteries, and Talismans won't even get to see what they are in advance. We'll get thrown straight into the action. Oh, uh, we've already had... Uh, guys. Guys. Learn your right night history, okay? We've had a civil war between, in order... Speedy Volfred versus Quarterback Manly. Then it was Snadra versus the World. Then it was Barker Steel's Cri Christmas. Then it was. After that, was it? The final forecast? Oh no. Then it was uh, the Battle of the Spiral Sanctum. The one that is, uh, yes, Sea Dwellers versus Land Lovers. Exactly. Then it might have been Final Forecast. I might be missing one. But uh, the point is, we've already done that. <laughs> the reason why we don't take that request anymore, because we've already settled this dispute. Been there, done that, guys. That's why it's over. It's done with. We've already had a civil war about it. We need to move on to bigger and better things. It had its time in the sun. But now we have to move beyond that, okay? <laughs> the Falcon Ron forecast slash final forecast and, and, you know, that combination of those names. All right, why don't we get this one started up with a customize off match? Okay, what do we have here? It's double curve for failure, additional starting pile life, I believe, and a worm. 
For Nor, it is a teleporting Gareth and two harps. So double classes for both characters, or both players. Seize chance for Failer, so extra damage on the Worm Plunge. It's double curve for Failer, double harp for an or. Interesting matchup. Rookie hops in, has the extra damage. What's that, Cacao? We had I wrote her song requested. You have one in there as well. I know we're plunging for twenty here. Anor goes backwards to go forward. Uh, pushes Gara forward from uh, quite a ways away. <laughs> Did not appear to be in contact with the heart, but look at that banishment, though. Anor with Gareth. Gareth will not be pushed around like this, Anor. He will plunge in glory. But he is not some token to be trifled with. Everyone banished on Anor's side for time for failure to, uh, I, I lost track. 720? Possibly even more than that. Oh, last week. Okay, gotcha. You knew what you did, chat. You knew what you did last week. Ooh, well defended there from Taylor. Has explosive temper on Rookie. Not a mastery you tend to see people take. But here is a speedy Gilman returning and getting a throw off for 12. Gareth. Back to Pamatha. Gareth down. Amethyst retreats, but gets banished. Luminous Idol on Gilman, we've learned. So that means he'll get full stamina back once he picks up the orb. Tamitha bides time, waiting for Pamitha to return. She has returned, as has Gareth. Switches in to her sister and plunges for 20. Gareth teleports to the orb, but he gets banished. Gilman sidesteps one cast. The throw is wide, though. Anor gets it back here. Gareth switches. But Anor gets blocked. Still has it here, though. Now she's banished. Gilman. Tries to throw this one in and does have enough on it. Not the maximum, just nine. Gareth once again. Over to Pamitha. Switches with Gareth. Back behind the pyre, but he's banished. The sisters switch places, but they still go down here. Pamitha to Gareth. Gareth. Back to Pamitha. Switches to Tamitha. Hops over the cast. But not the second time. Gareth, banished here. Speedy Gilman. Oh, for a second, it looked like he was going to try to go under the defender. All reverse psychology style, but he does get blocked. Here's Nor on the attack now. Not Tamitha. Tamitha, not, not her, though. Switches into Gareth, is ultimately the one to make the move. Albert. Oh, goes down, but Lucky Break will bring him back quickly. Tamitha Banish, that's everyone on Anor's side. If Failer's quick, he has a free score, but Anor gets a harp back just in time. Explosive Temper, nearly capable of getting rid of that second harp as well. But Anor, luckily, had flapped away. Down goes Tamitha, just Pamitha here. No care for this round after he plunged. So no more defenses here until Tamitha returns. Here she is, though, just in time. Cornered and banished. Tamitha back to stop Dalbert, unless he can make it through. But he is blocked. 
Tanitha. Tries to make her move, but she's banished. But Anor keeps on getting a heart back just in time, except Failer sneaks through here for a 15 damage worm throw. And we are just about tied here. Looking at likely two scores for either player. Well, here's one of them. Failer drops Nor down to just nine and means any plunge would be sufficient for Failer. Oh, hold on. Is that a, is that a stunning claim or is Nor disconnecting here? This doesn't look good. Hold on. That doesn't look good. <laughs> that doesn't look right. <laughs> okay. Shall I uh, uninvite you, reinvite you, Nor? Yeah. Let's see. Let's get you in. It's like, maybe that was a stunning claim, but that's the world's longest stunning claim if it was. All right, let me know once you're ready and I can give you guys a countdown. You're in? Okay, so I'll go three, two, one, go, and on go we'll hit resume. Three, two, one, go. So Failer just needs one score here, and Nor needs two. Could this be it with Rookie? Not this time. But he's still in, has the orb back, mind you, and somehow finds a way through for the winning plunge. GG. Stamina, no! <laughs> or a lack thereof. Until the next oh, and Anor says, hold on. Hold on just a second here. We have to try that thing again. Customize remains off. We have the other Never to Return version. That was, of course, Failure's version. So perhaps home field advantage to Failure to a certain extent for that one, whereas this time round. Let's go. Yeah, there we go. Never to return Nightwing's version. The newbie Core has returned. Hey, Core. Welcome to Pyre. It's sort of like a magic fantasy basketball with books type game. Hey, you'll get used to it. Don't worry. You'll figure it out. So customize off. We have a song. The only other thing we could do would be an arena if that's of interest. Otherwise, just about everything has been claimed here. But seeing no such requests, <laughs> Core is that that person at prom. The Ridge. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, the Ridge. Nah, I, I was gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. No worries. No worries. Okay, so what do we have here with another randomized match? Looks like, is that two savages for failure? It is plus Orlek. Wow, that is a crazy team for failure. It is Vizpalef, Vorfrit, and Tizo for an ore. Here's Vorfrit, banished by Gareth. Opportunity for Gareth here. Oh, what? Just 10 damage. Is that a stubborn flame from an ore's Vorfrit, maybe? Because Failer did start with the additional Pyre Life, which must have come from a mastery from Orlek. It means we know actually quite a bit about Forfrit in that case, because Southern Flame is all the way down on the left side, meaning she definitely does not have the Crone Salute. Infernal Bloom on, was that Gareth or was that the Stowaway for Failer? One of his savages. Finds a way through there's the confirmation on Southern Flame. We had pretty much confirmed that before, but means slightly less damage on the plunge there from Orlek. No prayer beads on him, so he'll be gone for this round. But Anor plunges for 30 here with Vorfrit. And no prayer beads on her, so she's gone. Anor does have Brazen Manor on Vizpaleth and does have Web Lanthorn. Is that on Tiso? Orlek with time here, but with Faelor still in the lead, it maxes out at 15 damage. The 
sees Bleth. Moves in to take the orb. Now just Tizo probably not prefers Anor's preferred score here. Down he goes, but Vorpit returns. Mooncrest on Gareth means he'll come back more quickly from banishment. What is it, 60% of the time? Miss Bleth knocking some people back. I think Anor perhaps looking to set up an advanced portal here and has done so. Likely the setup of Brazen Manor Viz Paleth play, but does need to get the orb back in order to pull that off. And Phaler can teleport to the orb, which makes that a little more difficult because it sets up this score here. And anytime there is a free orb, it means Phaler need only salute and he can teleport to it. Viz Paleth. Oh, gets rid of one defender. But Orlek is back in time to recover. Big hops from Orlek, though. Oh, look at that last second save, though, from Anor. Means a long wait for Failure to get Orlek back. Maybe needing for the Stowaway to get the job done here defensively, but Anor through the portal, setting up this quick 24 damage throw. Four foot down. Is Baleth down? Just Tizo. Again, likely not Anor's preferred score. So maybe just trying to buy a little more time here for the other XLs to return defensively. And has done just that. Or elect for failure, though. Locked. Oh, look at that. Nearly 180 cast. But Viz Baleth here. Around the other way, knocks back the defenders. Setting up a big 30 damage plunge. Gareth. Trying to get rid of that last defender. Oh, quick snap cast. Oh, but look at that. The crone returned the favor. Orlek trying to track down Tizo. Down goes Tizo. And Vorfrit. Time perhaps for failure here. Set up this throw. And once again, Stubborn Flame active here. So at most, we're looking at 15 damage. Forfeit. Rush down. Gareth snipes one, then gets banished, and that is the web Lanthorn on Tizo. Such a strong setup for a customized off match. That is saying something. Free orb. Oh no, Anor has it with Tizo here. Hiding in the corner, but here comes Forfeit through the portal. She gets shut down, though, as does Tizo. This Paleth cannot return quickly enough to stop this 10 damage plunge from Gareth. No prayer beads on him, though, so he's gone. That is a huge jump for Morlek. But he's dispossessed and banished. And with no Gareth, no Morlek, and now no stowaway. Uncontested 30 damage throw from Vorfrit. It means Nor has temporarily taken the lead here, although Stubborn Flame no longer active. It means Failure actually does have enough damage if he's to score with Orlek specifically. So rare case in which scoring may have actually been against Anor's best interest there, because that means that score right there is enough. GG. All right, well, well played, you two. And yeah, the thought did occur. It's, it's so rare that that happens, but every once in a while, there are times where if you have Stubborn Flame, it might be in your best interest to either score for less points or just find some other ways to do some damage control. And Beric says, Anor is owed a pick of songs. I don't remember why this is, but apparently. And did we have... Let's see, did we just finish both of the Never to Returns we did, didn't we? So those are all set. Do we have anything else waiting in the queue here, request-wise? Done our customize offs. So yeah, I think we're just looking at the song request there. Turn customize back on, unless of course that's something we want to keep off, in which case, let us know. 
from the scavenger challenge a week ago. Forza has just two masteries. Downside Ballad Acoustic. Okay. I need to figure out <laughs> where on Bandcamp I can find the acoustic versions. Maybe I have a theory. I have a theory. Mm. There we go. We'll turn off in game music, of course. Ooh. Then Glade of Lou as well. Sure. So we have Song, Arena, Masteries. Anything else? Or will that be all? Looks like that'll be it. Glade of Glue. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. Not sure, is there a specific setup that would make the Glade of Lou turn into the Glade of Glue? Like maybe a whole bunch of saplings? I don't know, how does one create glue in Pyre? All right, and a heads up, Anora's looking for just a few more and then she'll be swapping out. So if there is anyone in chat who'd like to get in on the action, then we may be looking to call your name soon. But your talismans and your exiles are up to you here. Just remember, only two masteries. So that may affect who you'd like to take here. As many of the usual combos may not be nearly as feasible with half the masteries players would normally have. Did see failure stick with Ulmer here but can't really do the full ninja setup with just two masteries. Anor has a sense as to where this is going. Headwind. Starts with power casting Headwind, and yep, it did. Perhaps there's some resemblance to an opening move that we saw Failure use in a previous match. Bottled Void Rookie from Anor, okay. That perhaps a little unexpected. Means whenever he comes back from banishment, he will suck in neighboring exiles like a vacuum cleaner, and if they fall within the range of his aura, they will get banished. And it's the second worm from Failure, so it looks like a pseudo Infiniworm setup from him here, which we did see him use on one prior occasion today. Then it's Speedy Jody in the last spot for Anor. Just two masteries for all characters here. We'll have to see how that affects the outcome. Jody Banish. Ooh, a little bit of an opening here for Thaler. He speeds in with Deluge. The Void is calling. Palmer goes down. Deluge goes down. That means Gilman returns, however. He explodes. Bring back some other worm friends. Well banished there from Thaler. And if he's quick, has just enough time to plunge for 15 here. And he had prayer beads on Deluge as well. So he had him back. Not that it matters here as he plunges once again, this time with Almer. Almer, though, of course, that means does not have prayer beads. And so he's out for this round. Edwin banished. Gilman making his move, sneaks under the defender and into the pyre for 15. Good. 
Okay, there's teleports to the orb. Gilman, oh, or rather Teluge, perhaps was looking to sneak under that time, but Anor was not falling for it this go round. Anor, two pronged attack, and it's Headwind who makes the final move. How many worms can you fit in one right? Oh, ho, ho, ho. what a question. What a question. The answer is yes. And that is the winning plunge. GG. Fail is like, you know what? Maybe this does warrant a ban. Until the next right. Well, well. Let's reset ourselves here. But let us know, chat, if there's anything we'd like for the next one. I don't think we had anything remaining in our queue. No, because we already had the last song. Okay. But you did not walk the path of the worm. Exactly. How can you expect to understand the worm if you do not walk the path of the worm? Potato, we've been over this. Uh, there is only one possible thing you could be referring to here. That was also really funny how that ended and it really sounded like <laughs> that last note was totally wrong. Like, what? Shriekbot as we're shoving him off the stage. Sure, potato, sure. Alright, so we have a song then. Anything else we'd like for this next one? I think Anor had said she was looking at doing about two more. So if you do have other things that you'd like to see specifically between Failer and Anor, then we don't have much more time to make that happen. So bear that in mind. Alright, Potato selecting Exiles here. And Talismans. Uh, I'm sorry, could you, um... I'm not sure what you're referring to. Could you maybe... Specify in more precise terms which exiles and talismans you would like. Yeah, I'm sorry that that doesn't um no that doesn't mean anything to me. I mean, I think the transistor soundtrack is the best soundtrack of all the super giant games, so you won't get any argument out of me. Oh, nutritionistic Volfred, why didn't you say so? Why didn't you say so? Now that makes sense. Now, what is this Mr. Stick nonsense? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, what's that supposed to mean, right? But Nutrition Stick Volfred, now that makes sense. No, I don't, uh, no, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. No, I never heard of it. No. No, I don't. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't see it. No. All right, well, Nutrition Stick on Volfred for both teams. We have the song, so why don't we get this one started? Alright, so one Volfred with Nutrition Stick. Other than that, up to you. Failure goes with a Titan Tooth 
Hamatha, so she will stun anyone that she flies into. Then a Luminous Idol Pamatha for an orb, so she will get full stamina whenever she picks up the orb. Okay, and here is... The Nutrition Stick Volfred from an orb, no rekindling notably. Phaler has yet to take him, and so this will be Phaler's third and final choice. Phaler notably does go the full rekindling route, so very different setups on those Volfreds. Numbing Gust for Anor, rekindling for Phaler. Ah, uh, okay, but then Anor still takes the rekindling, but uses a second sap to get it with Palmas. Oh, and Anor. Aggressive sap placement there, preventing Phaler from putting down his sapling where he wanted to. That is a good place from which to throw the orb, if Anor can get the opportunity to do so. I believe she did take the quick-throwing talisman on Palmas. So that may be something she's looking to do at some point here. Phaler making moves with his nutrition stick full friend, but he goes down. Now Anor on the counter with her nutrition stick full friend, but he's banished. Phaler does have a portal here. But it is currently covered by that that sapling, so he will need to use his imp to hover over it and moves that portal much closer. But Anor has a character right next to Phaler's pyre, and Phaler is currently defenseless. But Anor needs to use that character to go get the orb. And in the meantime, Phaler, whoa, had some defenders back, but Anor blinks straight on in with one of those saps. Phaler wins the orb race. It goes down to the sapling. Big explosion. Amatha. Hiding away for the moment. Will not get Palmas back. But Volfred, oh, just barely returned. Looks like the Nor might have been a little too quick on this loop, but did somehow still make that work and gets a seven damage throw in from that. Volfred, not this time. Amatha, for failure. Not enough juice to make it into the pyre that time. Runs out of stamina. Oh, and the quick throw from Anor lines that one up for 25. Sailor banishes the opposing harp, but then goes down. So both Pamathas down here. Anor's has returned. Here she is. Fred. Well shielded. And blinks away just in time, looking to set up a quick throw, and it does have just enough on it to land here for nine. Even as he got pushed away mid-throw. Well placed sapling. Getting rid of Manly, or rather uh Volfred on Failure's side. Oh, miss. Big throw. Full 25, that quick throwing talisman. Nor loses a sap. And now it's failure. But the Titan Tooth would have stunned Anor, except she switches out to avoid it using the, the harp salute. Failure harp pushes his way in for 20. Quick throw! Oh, it's off target! Anor just needs nine, but remember, both players took a hundred rekindling. So even though it might look it, this one is far from over here. Anor switches, but gets that switching exile banished. Taylor loses full Fred. She blocks and banishes. Volfred can't avoid Pamatha. Pamatha switches into Volfred. Volfred thinking about the blink and does have it lined up here. There is the rekindling. No, it's just 50, I should say. Not 100 for both players. 
Amatha for Thaler. Oh! Switches in to Raji, and a little bit of a fake-out move there, but does find a way through for 15. Though that is Thaler's probably preferred defender that is now banished for this round, and Thaler defines himself defenseless right now. So time for this Anora throw. And it means with Thaler at 25 Pyre Life and having already gotten his rekindling, one score may be all that Anora needs here if it is a full damage score from one of those saps. Hamathai, however, would fall just shy of having enough damage. Ooh, aggressive move there from Anora's full friend. And suddenly, full friend with no one here to stop him thinks about blinking in. Looking for it all, but just can't quite get it to work. Seemingly standing on top of the pyre. Oh, and that throw is wide. But that also could have done the trick. Thaler. Outmaneuvers one defender and the second one. Finding his way through. But that does mean no Pamatha for this round. Moving in with Raji. Locked. Vanishes one. But Nor has it back. Taylor back into defensive position. Oh, but Anor banishes that last defender and walks it in for the winning plunge. GG. All right, let's head on back. Okay, and I think, at least based on what you were saying in Nor previously, that this might be your last one. I mean, of course, you're welcome to stick around if you'd like. Don't mean to force you out. But okay, yeah, Nor confirms this will be her last one. Oh my goodness. It's been too long. It's been too long, and what a way to go out with an absolute bang. Well then, Tariq Bot, get out of here, man. Get out of here, man. Once again, it's weird. Whenever we usher Tariq Bot out today, his final note that he plays gets distorted in some way. It just sounds really weird. But perhaps more fitting, as it is more reflective of us quite literally physically pushing Tariq Bot off stage as he's in the middle of playing something like, Lee no! Just messes up what he was uh, starting to play there. Anyways, anyways, we have a song. We have a song for this Falcon Ron match. That being Dirty Deal, and we should turn back on the in-game music. But that's not all. That is not all, because I'm afraid Anor is... In truth, in truth, she's really no longer playing, as the Nightwings know. Not really. Uh, see, Falcon Ron, I mean, I'll just, uh, just uh, bump you over here real quick. See, she's really playing as Falcon Ron, because let's be honest, Falcon Ron will now proceed to take over this entire match. There is no way about it. No other way about it. Okay. Sword Intro on, why not, right? Customize off as well, absolute... Complete and utter chaos, as it should be for a Falcon Ron match. Indeed. It's been too long, guys. I can't even tell you when the last time we summoned Falcon Ron was. I don't know who it was. I don't know when it was. Too long. Too long is the only thing I can say. So, let us begin. And, as we said, there will be someone... Anor will be swapping out for this one, so we will be looking for someone to take her place. But, but, let us embrace the Falcon Ron Madness. Why hello, exiles. Why hello. You heed the summons to the Isle of Kaelma. Possibly the most chaotic arena as well. Perfect. Perfect. It was meant to be. Let us see which one of you is more deserving. The fate stand prepared. Nightwing stand. All right, it is Kerr, Savage, Demon for Failure. That looks like Orlek for an Or, plus Imp 
And Kerr, it is Orlek. Explosive Temper on Ruki. Not usually a master you'd like to take. Oh, Fairy Spirit, hold on. Oh, it's possible to get an infinite stamina Orlek? That'd be terrifying. That would be, or Ignarius for that matter, if Feather is the one to pick it up. Black Heart on Ignarius, it has to be, right? Somebody has to have Black Heart in a customized off match. It just wouldn't be a customized off match if someone didn't have it. But there is Ignarius, finger guns and all, for his 30 damage plunge here. Orlek vanishes. Opportunity here. Up uh, what? Orlek. Dude man. It's an open score. Okay, there with the counterattack. Hops in here for 15. Orlek got the orb first here. Trying to find a way in. Bring around the Rosie, but does eventually find a way to plunge for 25. Rookie stuck on the imps there in the middle for a second. Baylor has not yet claimed the orb, it remains unclaimed here in an ore. Oh, ha might have had an opportunity there on the capture track. Web Lanthorn on Failer's Gareth, it seems. And that means time for him to throw it in for 20 as well after those banishments. Orlek down. And if an or Oh, actually, 40 seconds on the Orlek respawn time. What? That means Failer must have the additional banishment time on Ignarius. That is painful. It's functionally a guaranteed full round banishment for Orlek. You just hate to see it. Orlek back at it though, but he goes down again and once again, 40 second respawn. I know we're gonna have to buy a serious amount of time if she has any plans of getting him back here. Ignarius blocked and banished. Uh, okay, boys, that's a, a little bit odd, but um, Gareth teleports and throws this one in for 20. Orlek. Trying to avoid the banishment this time around. Banishes one defender. That would certainly help. Has the orb back. Oh, knocks back the defender, but gets banished nonetheless. An orb rookie here. This time, at least, it was not banishment via Ignarius, and so it's a 30 second respawn, not 40 second. Also, Ignarius came back as a howler, so he was defenseless. And an orb able to plunge for 20 here. That is certainly a benefit of if an orb can banish Ignarius. Oh, but he does come back. Infinite stamina this time. No one back to defend unless an orb the last second save. No, not quite. And so, Thaler plunges for the win. GG. The ceremony is complete. Well played. Hope cannot go negative. So the worst respawn time you can have from having low hope is 30 seconds from one hope. However, the demons have a mastery. Well, there's a, a talisman and also a demon mastery that increases the amount of time percentage-wise of how long it takes for someone to come back from banishment. And so that is not a huge factor if you're, say, banishing someone like a Kerr who has just a short respawn time. But if you banish someone like Orlek who has a 30-second respawn time, if you increase that by 20, 30, uh, 33 percent whatever it might be then uh yeah that in terms of just pure seconds uh, that that equates to a lot Until the stars align. it was 10 additional seconds of respawn time for orlek and that is just killer especially if you don't have a way to get him back might have been astral eye i don't think there's any effect from going negative with a stat though so i think Orlek with Astral Eye functionally has no additional downside, it's just pure damage increase. I say this because we had the, uh, we don't see it very often nowadays because we don't do Titan Stars that often, but there's the Titan Stars hangover effect where sometimes we'll get a bunch of characters with negative stats or at least lower than usual stats. And so when we saw that happening every now and again, 
I think we did some testing to verify, is there actually something that happens when you go to negative hope or negative quickness or what have you? Do you run backwards? I, no, unfortunately you don't run backwards, although I really wish you did. That would be awesome. But uh, no, so I don't think that going into negative hope means you have any longer respawn time. It was some other source of increasing the respawn time. But thanks for stopping by, Nor. Good to have you, and thank you for unleashing Falcon Ron. I know, right? I want the moonwalking. I want it so badly. I wish. I really wish. Yeah, I think it was right for exactly. On Ignarius. Because we saw when Ignarius banished Orlek, it was a 40 second respawn time. And then there was, might have been, was it Gareth? Got a banishment for failure on Orlek, and then it was just 30 seconds in that instance. So clearly it was something that uh, Iggy was doing that was increasing Orlek's respawn time, and that means it was likely the Demon Mastery. Rookie also had a 7 second respawn time, which is more than usual. Yeah, so it's not as noticeable with the curves because, you know, 33% increase, or whatever the number is for percentage increase, on, uh, you know, like 5 second respawn time, having like 2 extra seconds. Not likely to be a huge factor, but... If you have, uh, you know, 10 additional seconds because you're getting uh, one third added onto an already 30 second respawn time, that is very noticeable. But anyways, anyways, Anor has swapped out here, which means we're looking for someone to hop in to take her place. And just to check in on you, Failure, are you good to stick around? You want to swap out as well? How are you feeling? Feeling good. Still feeling good? Okay. I'm here for a few more. Okay, Failure's good for a few more. So is there anyone who would like to hop in here to face off against Failure for a few matches? Any takers for facing off against Failure? Don't all volunteer at once. I know some uh, unbridled enthusiasm. I mean, I know we, <laughs> we're just starting for the day. So I know we have plenty of people in chat who have not yet played today. Who have played in the past. Guys, I'm not going to do it every single time I play. It's like, Lids, you have to do Invito Worms. You have to do Invito Worms Mirror. Almost every single time I play, that is almost always what uh, you guys want me to do. It's like, I can't do it every time. And it's not special anymore. You have to keep it a somewhat rare occasion so that it has more meaning. But, I mean, if there aren't other people who are looking to jump in here, then, I mean, I can. But as I said, I mean, we only had two people play thus far. Surely there are others in chat who are, or at least have in the past, expressed interest. I suppose, I suppose I can be a, a placeholder of sorts, and then he looks at Steam Friends as if he had to invite himself to the game. No, Lids, that's not the way that that works. As it turns out, that is not the, the way that that works. But I suppose, in the absence of others expressing interest and availability, I can hop in for a little bit, but I'm mostly just filling in until someone else is interested and available to hop in and take my spot. So, uh, please don't hesitate to volunteer if you are interested in participating. As I can swap out whenever. And I would prefer to get as many of you guys in chat here to play as possible. Oh, hold on. Let me plug in my controller. Also, apparently I'm a CPU.
Ew. Hold on. My wires are all tangled. Lids. Wire management, man. It's important stuff. Oh, wow. That is terrible. One second. There we go. That should be better. Only one worm. Back to 2k coins. Uh, the Falcon Ron request is expensive. It is expensive. That is true. Okay. One worm per reader. Sure thing. Now we should, yep, be able to do this. Let's verify, yep, that I'm player two. Looks good. Okay. So we have that exile request, and that looks like it. Also, what is this talk potato of I knew it? You knew that my my wires were all tangled? Is that what you knew? And let's turn customize back on here. We set our song. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Looks like we're back to our defaults now. Knew that I was a CPU? Ah, of course. I mean, I'm pretty sure I've said it before. Okay. Let's get started, then. Let us commence the write. Initiating write sequence. There's a little more to Falcon Ron than just the song request. It's hard to explain, but you see, Falcon Ron has a way of just influencing the rights. It's hard to notice. It's hard to tell until you really experience it firsthand. Okay, so one worm specifically for this match, they say. I myself am not much of a, a ninja savage player. I've really only done it like twice, maybe. But you know what? I'll give it a shot here. I'll see what all the fuss is about. All of you kids with your new ninja strategies. Exile. Yeah, I did set it up so that we, once upon a time in the old Tariq Bot days, we had a way to make it so we had better Tariq Bot, or rather, uh, better Falcon Ron sound effects. But new Tariq Bot can't really do that anymore, unfortunately. So that's another aspect that uh, that we've lost a little bit for the Super Falcon Ron request matches since the Tariq bot D, it's the opposite of evolution, D evolution, whatever. You know what I mean. Actually, no, you know what? I take it back. I take it back. I will use... I will use my worm here. I will use my worm. What kind of worm am I looking for, though? Regression, exactly. Something like that. What kind of worm do I want? I don't know. You know what, in the name of science, let's go ridiculously speedy worm. Actually, worms, are worms the only character that have fast enough base quickness that they actually gain more speed from Lunar Glass than they do from Tailwind Crest? They might be the only class for which that's the case. So in the name of science, we'll test it. Exactly, Anor knows. Anor, you've, I think you've requested Falcon Ron on at least a couple of occasions now, right? I don't think that one was your first, was it? I don't think it was. Okay, surprise, surprise, now I'm breaking this out. Aha! 
That moment when Lids does not remember the controls. It's been a while. Yeah, it wasn't. I think it's at least your second time now, right? About three or four times now. Wow, okay. You're definitely no rookie to the Falcon Ron Strats. Oh, well, so much for that salute. Oopsie daisy. Still got something left in the tank. Oh, that was just sloppy. That was bad. As was that. Lids, man. He doesn't practice anymore. He says as if he ever practiced this game. Ooh. Not quite full damage. Not quite the full damage. Not the best of salutes. <laughs> Just uh, spin around in circles. <laughs> I'll get the hang of it one of these days. <laughs> GG. Yeah, I was trying to do it so that, um, because I knew you were going to start with a salute. I was trying to delay it just enough that you teleported first and then I teleported immediately after that, block you, and prevent you from doing anything with the orb, which I caught on a few occasions, but then when I didn't, stuff like that happened. <laughs> Takes some getting used to. Until the next Definitely. Oh, you kids these days, you're using it all the time. It's the new meta. All right, so let us know, chat, if there's anything else you'd like to see for the next one. And let, let us know if anyone wants to hop in to take my spot, because as I said, I'm mostly just filling in here until someone else from chat is interested and available to take my spot, because uh, I want to get you guys in as much as possible. Sky dance on the boat? What? What is this nonsense? Oh, hold on. I mean, it does make sense, if you think about it, in a very specific way. Because, sure, sky dance may be about flying, and may sort of be the song of the arena that we were just in, but, but there is very much still a way to have some flying on the boat, of course. So I say we get this one started. Cause I think you know what I have in mind, dear. We'll give you reason for that sky dance request. Okay, well, I mean, does it come as any surprise? So, hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know. You know. Question is, do we try to go completely the utterly brazen route and also throw this on to set up for the just absolutely amazing full arena dunk, or do we settle and say, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll just get the extra pyre life or presence or something like that. Would have said Ness, but not a huge fan of that map. No worries. No worries. Sure, we'll go for it. We'll go for it. Why not? with the Tailwind Crest on you. Nest worst map. There are, I think there are some people who would agree with you. There are some people who may agree with you. Even people who like harps who may agree with you, even if it is technically the harp home arena. Let's go. This pull left. No, actually, we'll go Iki here. 
And we'll give Iggy Brazen Manor as well. We'll give him prayer beads. Ignatius. Blade Unmodded was not very popular. That is true. There's a reason why we had uh, modded it in the first place and then decided that it was worth implementing that mod for Right Knights as well. It was a little bit, a little bit of a uh, divisive map. Okay, and then I mean, well, obviously, we're going triple demon here. Obviously, but on this occasion, we'll go a little bit safer. We'll get the extra pyro life. We'll, mm. See, this is the mastery that Ignarius had in the previous match that we were talking about all the way down to the right side for the demons, where it takes 30% longer than usual for someone who this character banishes to come back from banishment. So if this Bleth in this case had this mastery and banished a usual 30 second respawn time Orlek, then suddenly you're looking at about a 40 second respawn time for Orlek, which is just crazy. Whereas on a character that has a base of, you know, in this case, it's still gonna be pretty long for, for this Bleth, but like, a base 10 second respawn time. Okay, you're getting an incremental three seconds. It's not a huge deal. It's noticeable, but it's not a humongous deal, but it's most noticeable on Orlek. Because then it's just like, well, I mean, he's just not coming back. He is never returning. Eh. Eh. And then, in the interest of at least covering for our glaring weakness, a little bit. We'll take Web Lanthorn. Because speaking of long recharge or respawn times, that is kind of the thing with this team that we have right now. Oh, uh, hold on. One moment, please. One moment, please. One moment, please. Ah, oh, not quite. Not quite what we were looking for. Close, but no cigar. Um, please don't do that. Please do not do. Please don't do that though. Hello. A bit of a yes, he's done it! The full arena plunge! If only there was a brazen manor, but we'll take it. Okay, we have honestly don't care what the outcome of this right is now. Mission accomplished. That's all we were looking for. We'll take it. A true thrust into the Absolute poggers. Okay, it's okay. They're 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 disposable. It's oh no, it's Orlek that we care about. There's that web lanthorn paint off force. Go away, go away. You're not welcome here. You're not welcome here. No, oh, not quite. Not hold on, that's not good enough. Oh no, why the big jump when we're going backwards toward our fire? That's not what we wanted. I wanted the big one going the other way. That's not what I asked for. No, and not the salute. Get back there. Get back there with your nonsense. That's a very aggressive block. No, 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 don't. Enough of that. No enough of that nonsense. Uh, also, I can't jump. <laughs> oh, GG. GG. This night's proceedings. Oh, I think we both won that one. And that, for that reason, is beautiful. What more could you ask for? Kids! That's why we play demons on the boat. And it's also why you don't actually want to do a team entirely full of demons, but that, that's beside the point. The, the primary point was that we wanted to get a full arena slam dunk, and we did. So let us know, chat, if there's anything else that you'd like to see for the next one. As I was saying, if there is anyone who'd like to take my spot, I am, uh, I'm just placeholding for the moment. For anyone from chat who has interest in availability.
Customize off. Says potato. Can still do a song. Can still do an arena if either of those things are of interest. But of course, the customized off covers exiles, masteries, and talismans, randomizing all of them. And it does look like that'll be it. So why don't we hop in here? The aisle, oh, hold on. We can still make it happen. We can still make it happen. It might've been about to be a random aisle. <laughs> I might've just heard the aisle sound effects in the background <laughs> at the start of that, right? But now it's definitely the aisle. For failure, extra starting power life, demon sap worm, demon worm savage for me. That's still going in, I think. Quick throw at that though. Okay, I have C's chance. It's Lady River for what it's worth. So that means, whoa, look at that starting power life. Oh my goodness. Did not notice just how much he had until a minute ago there. Okay, what does Ignarius have? I uh, don't think he had Brazen Manor. Oh, he did have Brazen Manor. I really thought you were about to take that. Typhoon Bottle, though, uh, it's still not going to be enough to um, save me here. That is a fast Iggy. Is that just me? Seems like he's walking faster than usual. He might have the uh, Tailwind Crest. Wouldn't rule that out. I do have Brazen Manor. Confirmed. Yes. Indeed. Whoa, those imps are going crazy. Absolutely bonkers. Okay, Almer, what do you have? What do you have? Uh, well, I, mean, I don't know why I would test the salute when you already have the orb, but uh, you have Seize Chance. No. Stamina, please. Stamina, please. Stamina, please. Thank you. I might have been too... I was too slow on the praise manner. Yeah, not quite. Not quite. Ooh, no staminas. No staminas. Silly lids. No prayer beads either on my Ignarius. Yeah, I'm blocking jumps with savages is not fun. Also, that was very unfortunate. That was very difficult to not banish Ignarius <laughs> in that instance. That was a hard thing to do, to mess that up as much as I did. Ooh, not quick enough on the throne. For also, once again, difficult to mess that up as much as I just did. Okay, we have now confirmed no savage salute. That also was not going to work next to a sapling. <laughs> well, uh, GG. GG. <laughs> not the most inspiring of performances on my side of things. Kids, don't do that. In general, try not to get all of your exiles banished by walking into your opponent's auras. Dread design. Okay, let's turn customize back on before we forget. Oh, I, uh, well, and then I just proceeded to immediately assume that was the only thing we we're gonna do, which may not be the case. But I, I guess we'll, I guess we'll just go with dread design and nothing else. Absolutely washed indeed. And we're back on the boat. Oh, well, I mean. We already did the demons. We already did the demons. Are we about to do them again? 
I don't know. That might be a, a one time is enough kind of thing. He has tried to sign a rock song. I don't really think so, but hey, it's good for sure. There is another triple to do on the boat. They are actually, it is the single worst arena for triple class that you are expecting me to say. For what it's worth, you would think it wouldn't be the case. It is the worst arena for them. or crones oh sorry i only just saw that um i will probably have an imp on this team does that count I, admittedly, I only saw you post that until after I'd already chosen uh, Pamitha there. I had kind of made up my mind for what I was looking for here before you said that. Had I seen it before I selected anything, maybe I could have been convinced to switch things up. Um, oh, I've already taken that, that's why. It's like, uh, why is this not letting me take anything? I knew that. Okay, so now Failure is going for what I did last time. How did that still stun me? <laughs> what? <laughs> You're well on the ground. There's a big one. Oh, but you gotta go full arena, man. Full arena. That's just the appetizer. Wait until you see the entree. Just wait until you see the entree. That was going to be a big one, though. You could tell that was about to be a big one. Um, please give it to the exile that I would like to give it to. Ooh, good interception. Oh, get out of there. Ooh, good snipe. Good snipe. Also, I didn't actually want to go through that portal. But I guess I will now. Whoopsie daisy. That's not what I meant to do. Ooh, big jump though. I'm very confused. <laughs> I accidentally went through a portal several times there. Just, uh, pardon me. We went over. Oh, there you go. Um, it's like a bottom void like effect there. That was weird. 
Also, he took a bunch of pyrolite. In case you didn't notice. <laughs> That's a lot. Ooh, away you go. Ooh, and a big bit of a black magic jump there. You don't see it very often from the demons, but well done. Thus end this night's proceedings. GG. Until the next right. All right, so let's reset our song here. But let us know, chat, if anyone wants to take my spot. I'm just holding down the fort for the time being. Otherwise, if there is anything you want to see between Baylor and myself, let us know. Anor had an idea for a challenge a while ago, but forgot. Darn. Do you remember any components of it? Any pieces of it? Okay, Potato says, Mastery is 100% on one side. And to clarify, does that mean that all three exiles must have all their masteries on the same side? Like if you choose all left side headwind, you need all left side Ignarius and all left side Dalbert. Or can you have all left side on one character, then all right side on another character, and then all left side on your third character? Each side, each character can choose a different side. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Anything else? Another exile's request, okay. Anor can't remember what the pieces were. Darn. Okay, at least one savage. Or is it precisely one savage? No more. And if that is consistent with... I mean, potato, you could potentially. At least one... At least one savage and one nomad. Okay, that's, we can combine those. That works. That does work. One nomad and at least one savage. Okay, let's try it. Flame talismans as well. There are a lot of them. The and Barrick, <laughs> the next house request, is this one gonna be compatible? At least one savage, at least one nomad. We might have another exile request. Nomad and exile our ships. Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, all, all a certain side failure for masteries. Like either all left side or all right side. No worries. I forgot to remind you of that. Uh, do we want to lock in the same arena or do we just want to go for another random one? Does it matter? No, yeah, Nomad and Savage. They are getting shipped. Okay. If you insist. Hmm. Okay. I think I have an idea. One nomad, at least one savage. The nomad and the savage are getting shipped, and he must have masteries entirely on one side. You can choose a different side for different exiles, however. 
in a while without the ship request. <laughs> I suppose so. I suppose so. Okay, if I'm going all one side, am I going the ninja side of things? Am I going the jumping side of things? Eh, and full step side of things? Probably going this side. Probably going this side. Oh, the fl ah, there's too many request flames requests as well. Fail we messed up again. <laughs> there's a lot of requests for this one. I messed that up. I don't know if you did, but uh, flame talismans. <laughs> okay, hold on. We need to get this straight. One nomad. At least one savage. The nomad and the savage are getting shipped. All one side masteries. Flame talismans. Okay, I will take Gareth. He is my savage of choice. You are 1000% correct. There was never really any question at all as to whether this was going to be the savage that I took. But which flame? But which flame? Of all the flames. Which flame? Probably that flame, I guess. There aren't any flames on this page, are there? No. Okay. Yeah, we'll take that flame. Exile. <laughs> oh, potato. We'll see. We'll see if we can. We'll see if we can. Uh, all one side with the masteries. <laughs> There's a lot of requests for this one. <laughs> the hardest part is just not messing up <laughs> all the requests. Okay, so Faylor going for one non-savage, one non-nomad. That is allowed. Headwind. But no, six with headwind, actually, so that means Faylor is shipping stowaway plus headwind. For me, it's Gareth. And Snadra! <gasps> no way. No way. Could it be? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. The question is just, is Snadra power casting without the access to the power casting talisman? Or we go in Sacred Bond, which does not require as much of a talisman synergy. Ah, we'll go this route. We'll go this route. And then... <laughs> and Nora knew it. And it, Gareth was obviously going to be my savage choice. I don't play Nomads very often, but I think Snadra is probably my most common Nomad choice if slash when I do play them. Which fire? Which flame? I might go flame leech. What's my last exile gonna be though? I don't know. I haven't really planned that far in advance. So maybe we'll just put uh, the living flame on Snadra and leave it at that. Okay, it was Pamatha. Oh, true. I need to think about which class I wanna have all on one side does complicate matters a bit here I guess and I do usually go for that setup 
Then flame, leech. Still flame here. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, that was that was too slow. It was too slow. Also, okay, I was gonna say, if Sandra did not catch that, I was going to be a little displeased. Rename right light into eternal flame, problem solved. <laughs> I did not take shoulder smash, question mark. I did not. I mean, no, I, I totally, um, that's totally something that I did. You should definitely beware of doing the, uh, the jumping thing, because I'm totally going to try to jump and block you and whatnot. Good snipe. Good snipe. Ooh, that snap cast, though. That snap cast, though. Tell the fate. Oh, good question. Very good question. One that I find myself needing to ask myself just about every day, really. So, how's it going? Oh, that's straight to Sandra slash headwind. I need my extra flight capabilities, you know? There it is. No, I want it. <laughs> but I want the orb. But what if I want the orb, though? Oh, no, I let you in there. Ah, so you didn't teleport that time. I see how it is. So you don't have your Savage. Duly noted. Oh, there's the push. Well done. That was interesting, you locked on and you actually, post-switch, still locked on to the, uh... Well, you had shoulder smash, but I did not. Uh, you still locked on to the original exile in question. That's gonna get intercept or not. No, don't block me. That's rude. Bad move. Bad move. <laughs> I think next one is going to be my last one. Okay. Gotcha. So heads up, chat. Sailor is definitely looking to swap out soon. As I said, I'm ready to swap out whenever anyone else would like to take my spot. So, uh, chat, prepare yourselves accordingly. Because I don't think we've yet seen anyone else but has expressed interest in hopping in here, but we will definitely be looking for someone to hop in soon. I don't think we had any requests remaining here. I think we had about 10 for that match, but I think we 
squeeze them all into one match. Did I, hold on, did I forget to activate Titan Stars for this? Hold on, I can, I can activate that if that is something that I forgot to do. Give me just a second here. Let's see, I might have, I might have missed it. Where are you, Titan Stars? Uh, yeah. Okay, if you refresh, if you refresh the stream, it should be up now. Should be up now. <laughs> Look, five is basically ten if you round it up, right? It's basically ten. Okay, what is this? Is this the one that Anor had had planned? Did she remember what it was? March of the Arch Dancer. You have to move to the beat of the song that plays. Whoa. Whoa, that's an interesting one. Okay. Okay. Do we have a, I feel like we have to have a specific song requested then, right? There has to be a specific song that you have in mind in that case. <laughs> Give us a little bit of time to think about the song so we can play it accordingly. Lament of Orpheus, okay. Hold on, we, I think we start playing that and give ourselves a little bit of time to think it over. That means that'll be Tariq Bot. Oh, not controls, so let's turn off the in-game music. Underworld Remix, okay. That I think I have been able to find on the band camp. Lament of Orpheus Underworld Mix, have it right here. Okay. It's a slow one, for what it's worth. It's a very slow song. That could be difficult. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, for that reason, I feel like it naturally lends itself more to some of the slower characters. I'm trying to picture in my mind. What exiles can move to this this rhythm, this beat? Feels too slow for things like curs, worms, savages, probably even harps, possibly. Okay. Okay, I think I have a general sense of what I'm looking for for my team. Are you are you in a, a state to take this on, Baylor? It's gonna be tough, but we can try. I'm up for giving it an attempt. Starts to pick up a little bit more in this part. Not sure to what extent that might mean trying to use, like, save a specific exile for this latter half of the song. Only use them in this part where it picks up a bit. And that one might be a little bit of a faster exile then. That's tough. That's tough, but it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, Core can hop in after we're done here. That's cool. Because Failer had said he's looking to switch soon. Oh, <laughs> it's in the pit of Malice. Oh, such a good meme arena. Small arena at that. Ooh, does that affect anything? It could. It certainly could. Man. I think I can... I can see the harp happening. I can see the harp working. I think harp or imp both can make a lot of sense. Especially for this part here. I think. But I think even then, full speed harp is probably too fast. I think it probably needs to be a slower harp for that reason. I feel like fell swoop. If you do a fel perfectly timed fell swoop at one of the dramatic points of the song, that would be chef's kiss.
I honestly did not even remember that this mask really existed. How much speed can we give her while still abiding by the beat? Like, this part is so slow. So I feel like Tamitha, I'm just not going to be using it the slower part of the song, or the less amped up part of the song. Oof. I guess. I, but then having an extra dash could be... I guess we'll do this just for the extra dash, but we won't go down for the extra quickness here. That, I think, would be excessive. So let's go... I feel like Luminous Idol has some serious potential. Serious potential for this. And I would think about using an imp, but I feel like there's a chance Tamitha may have taken that role as the flying character a little bit faster. I think we definitely need at least one really slow character for this part. So I'm thinking something like... Oh, hold on. Hold on. With Brazen Manor. A perfectly timed Brazen Manor would be beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I think that has to be. I'm not sure the Celestial Spike. I think that's a little bit too quick. That's a little bit too... Spur of the moment type of thing. I think that might defeat the purpose a bit. Oh, but but you gotta have the crushing heal though. You have to have the crushing heal for that dramatic, you know, land right when the, the drum hits. That could help as well. Hmm. I don't know what talisman, if any, works best. I mean, you could, like, Double Ring Demon, I think it's too fast. It, I think, probably defeats the purpose a bit. I think we're looking more for something like, maybe even Time 2. Something that makes the jumps feel like they really matter. Maybe Extra Aura Size. Hmm. Something cast-related. I'll go Titan Tooth. Double, triple, Imp, and Flutterfly. <laughs> True. Triple Hop and Kerr, you know, might actually, there might be something to be said for that. If you can get the triple hops going perfectly in rhythm, that would be great, but I think that would be tough. But you could make a, a strong case for that, I think. Could potentially still fit in an Imp, obviously, from a team composition standpoint. With the effectiveness of the right, that would be helpful, but I'm, I'm trying to prioritize the uh, being true to the request more so than just trying to pick a, a good team. So I have my slow person. I have my kind of fast person. Maybe. Maybe I'll try one of those triple hopping curves. It's going to be really tough, I think, to make that work. But I think we give it a shot. Let's Let's go for it. Let's go big. And sure, we'll, we'll throw the prayer beads on in that case, I guess. In case we are successful, we'll still get him back. All right, let's do it. So we are doing a match in which we are trying to have our characters move to the beat of the song. And with a slow song like this, that's going to be that much more tricky, I think. Time it, time it. Like, the, the way the demons plod slowly for this part of the song, I feel like it's perfect. That was well timed. That works. Well, hold on, picks up a bit. That was silly.
Wait for it, wait for it. On the, on the beat, eh, not as much that time. Okay, ready? Got the, the timing right for the song. Uh, it wasn't exactly a good time to use a triple jump in the game, but that, that's beside the point. That worked well, timing-wise with the song. Wait, hold on, it's quiet, it's quiet, it's quiet. No, oh, I, I had it all planned, it was gonna be perfect. Did the little burst of speed every time it, it kicked up and then I was gonna sprint ahead right when it picked up right now. No, it was a glorious plan. It was gonna be amazing. It was all for the dramatic triple hopping Kerr escape. <laughs> GG. It's tough. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, there's always going to be that the competing priorities of how truthful are we trying to be to the request versus, you know, how much are we just trying to win the game of fire? Because I basically completely ignore trying to win the game of fire in exclusively with the intention of trying to uh, go to the beat of the song. And so it's it's the kind of thing that you can never really do perfectly one way or the other for that reason, but it's a cool idea. I like it. Tough to implement for that reason. Tough to implement for that reason. But, uh, nifty. Very nifty. That's cool. <laughs> so it was a match in which rather than, or well, the priority was that we were supposed to move to the beat of the music. Which was, uh, you know, it's new. We've never had that before. That much can definitely be said. You know, as for how best to implement that, that's it's not the easiest thing to make that a reality, of course. And to what extent does one follow that criteria? It's an infinite amount of gray area there, of course. But Korra said he's interested and available to hop in here. So we can get Korra in. But, do we have anyone else who would like to hop in to take my place? Because I've been just been filling in for the time being. So if we do have anyone else who would like to participate, I am more than happy to swap out here. Because the goal is usually to get as many people from chat into the action as possible. Excluding myself, I don't count. Okay, let's see. Exiles reader's pick. The exiles request, just to make sure that we don't get other exiles requests. No, it's not infinite worms. Okay, okay. Anything else though, in addition to that, or as I said, anyone would like to hop in and take my spot, you're welcome to do so. Or let me start setting you up here. Who would you like to beat Stakor? Because at least at the moment, of course, I've been using Fire hearts. I had muted core. Core, you may now speak, and I will start to hear you. Is there a specific triumvirate that you would like to be today, core? If you had told me previously, I did not hear you. Your backup is what? Usually chastity sometimes? Or. Or. I do not hear you, Core. I had you muted initially, but I have unmuted you. Oh, I lowered your volume. I not only muted you. I lowered your volume down to zero as well. Wow, that is, that's, that's a lot. It's a lot of ways to try to make you not be able to say anything. All right, now I can hear you, Core. Okay, I, I said three times over, chastity. Okay, well, you know what? It, now I we know. One. What's that, you are or you are not player one? I, I am player one. 
You are a player one. Okay. We'll see. There you go. There's the chastity. Okay, so we had us choosing the exiles. But other than that, I mean, that's basically a request, an, an anti request request. It will, of course, be Korra's first match of the night, but if there is anything else that we'd like to see for this one, let us know. Core, it's supposed to be your choice! <laughs> now he's taking the audience's response! But it's just a suggestion. I can reject suggestions. I suppose. I suppose. All right, let's hop in. Oh. We've gotten a ton of boats today. A ton of boats today. Okay, so, the thing is, my usual go-to, already done, on the boat, thus far. So, uh, what are we, what are we looking for in that case? I don't know! I don't know. What, what, what do we want? We want, uh, like a... You know what? Once upon a time... Someone earlier today, when I missed it, had said, Lids, what if you do, like, crones? And I almost never play crones. So let's do crones. Let's do some crone action. Crones are very good. They are indeed. Let's go for, I'll tell you what, we'll do the speediest of crones. Or for it has been trying out for the Olympics. As it turns out, the downside Olympics, of course. Just came off uh, her latest personal best. Now, are you gonna remember to curse? Uh, depends. You never play crones, so. The few times I do play crones. I often go for the curse. But well, will you remember it in game? That is the question. That is the question. I mean she set up a prediction in chat. I mean, now that you mention it, now you leave me no choice. I didn't want to do this core, but now you leave me no choice. Will you remember to use the crone salute, he asks. Will you remember, he asks me. And that's justified. That's fair. That is fair, because you know what's coming next. Just your average demon. Nothing. Nothing. I didn't pick anything. Nothing out of the ordinary on that demon. Nothing out of the ordinary from these crones, either. Don't mind them. Don't mind them. I don't remember which one had which talisman, which is also a problem. That is also a small problem. Because one of them had a throwing talisman and one of them had a plunging talisman, and I don't know which one had which. Which is rather unfortunate to not remember that. Because that is kind of important. That did not get you. That is also not the direction I meant to jump in. Very much not the direction I meant to jump in. 
trying to remember which. You're the super speedy crone, right? Ooh, surprised that still got blocked. Slash was not far enough to get in. Okay. If I must. If I must. Whoopsie. Ah, <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> No, stop! Stop that nonsense! No! <laughs> Not quite what I was hoping for, but we'll settle for that, I suppose. Oh, I uh, well. <laughs> so... To answer your question, yes, I remember to salute. Excellently done this time, I must admit. The ceremony is complete. Until the stars align. Wait, hold on. Did I forget the Lids! Did I forget the yeah, stowaway emote? Earlier. Hold on. Lids. I didn't see it. Hold on. Pull out the emotes. What happened to the stowaway emote? There she is. There she is. Okay. Now she's there. Now she's there. You might, you probably do have to refresh the stream, but she should be there now. What? The stowaway emote? <gasps> All right, well, let us know, chat, if there's anything that you'd like to see for the next one. That was, was that totally random? I think that was totally random. It just so happened to be on the boat, which turned into a, a, a whole different ordeal. And then the whole lids, are you going to remember to use your salute? Oh, well, yes, I will. Thank you very much. Let me just go triple crone salute while we're at it. Just to emphasize the point. The boat. <laughs> Is that why you guys were like, wait, hold on. What happened to the Stoa emote? I wanted to use her as the O. Learn is... I don't remember which one that is, but okay. Activating the Titan Sars. I think Learn is quickness. I want to say it's quickness, yeah. The Zoomy Exiles. Absolutely. Yeeslock? Oh. Oh, I don't know if we can do... We're asking for trouble. We're asking for trouble. There is a Rumi in chat. Hold on. Is a Rumi here today? A Rumi has some explaining to do, specifically with... Ah, no, Rumi's not in right now. Okay. Specifically has some explaining to do to Core in particular. So if a Rumi stops by, then, uh, then chat... If Arumi stops by, let him know immediately that he has some explaining to do for Core. He will know exactly what you were referring to. You do not need to give him any additional context. Just say, if he asks how you know, just say, oh, we know. Just say, oh yeah, we know. Wait, what does this have to do with me? 
Uh, he'll he'll let you know if he does stop by. I hope he does. What? <laughs> of course, like I don't understand. <laughs> Higher health drain that one as well. Okay, we're we're just we're just trying to load. <laughs> Give Lance a fighting chance here. He's an old man. He needs it. He needs all the help he can get. Apparently. All right, let's get this one started then. Okay, so yeast lock for the extra brain cell. Flurness, yes, is quickness. And then you said the pyre health brain one. I land I think, is it top? Top right? This is Shaxx, I know. Very top. Oh, it's bottom left, maybe? Yes. Dullness here, bottom left. Okay, gotcha. Oh, well. If one thing can beat Plurinus, it's <laughs> Okay. Uh, let's see. We're going super speedy strats. I think we test. I think we test. We were talking about how Forfeit was trying out for the Olympics. This might be her day. This might be her day. To make that happen. Looking for a really good qualifying time here. Exile. Okay, then for other super speedy boys, I'm thinking, what else do we want? And we're emphasizing the speed, of course, naturally. I'm thinking we go maybe for Barker. A speedy Barker. Maybe we we also take this extra speed on him. Barker. We're just going zoom zoom here. Barker. Then the question is for the last one: Do we go for Worm base quickness speed thirty three, or do we go for? A harp starts at 18, but then we go here. We can get faster flying and then eventually the plus and eight you quickness. You can put a ring to get more quickness. True, but I only went with one. Or I would only have the ability to okay. take one at this point. That's okay, you just want the quickness stat. That's only two though. It's nothing. That's nothing. It's no good. A rather luminous idol than that for the stamina. Speedy, ah, but we can't do Speedy Volfred anymore. And the extra quickness doesn't really affect Nutrition Stick. So it's not really as much of a synergy there. I think we might go Luminous Idol Harp. Go, so, if not entirely left side, mostly left side. Yeah, if you want Mega Speed, definitely go weak. Yeah, true, true. You're gonna be super fast. Okay, how fast is- OH MY GOD! What?! <laughs> so fast! <laughs> Zoom! What the heck? The zoomies! Oh, a little bit short there. A little bit short of the mark, but wow, that is fast stuff. That is incredible. She, she's zooming all right. She is just straight up zooming. In, exciting indeed. Get zooming, bro. Oh, I thought I could still get it back before you because I was so fast. <laughs> no, I want to 
want to see how fast I am when I get the banishment. <laughs> I just want to see how fast I am. Okay, ready? How fast are we talking? Whoa. Pretty fast. Well, you're Pretty... gonna fly, you're gonna fly. Oh, true, I do have the extra speed when flying. Okay, hold on, hold on. Get the orb. Fly. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fast. <laughs> that's pretty fast. Yeah, I put it on... On this one. On Vorfrith. Like, there's literally nothing I can do against this drone. Like, offensively. Oh, no. A lot of momentum <laughs> as soon as I start going with him, because he's so fast. <laughs> like, okay, I, normally I would fake one way and go the other, but once I commit one way, there's not really any way to back that up. Ooh, good quick banishment, though. Well done. Yeah, did get me. Not gonna lie, they had us in the first half. And they had us in the second half. <laughs> <Good game. laughs> Mostly just mess around with the speedy stuff. It's cool. It is cool. Yeah, so sorry if that was meant to be a way for, for that right to be more competitive. I, I then proceeded to just see how fast I was and not actually do much beyond that. But the speeds, though! Yeah, the worms technically have the highest base move speed before you factor in any other buffs. But then you have things like the extra zoomy L2 mastery for the curves. You have harps with a few speedy masteries. You have uh, crones with a speedy mastery. So it's, it's not always as simple as just, well, worms are the highest quickness. Let us know, chat, if there's anything that you'd like to see for the next one. Actually, tell you what, I think we probably need to do a quick restart here. Otherwise, I'm going to get the Titan Stars after effect and have negative quickness for the next match. Which, as we previously discussed, unfortunately, does not mean that I move backwards. As much as I wish that was the case, so this is just to get us back here, and now we should be back to normal, right? I like the idea of... We could do book if you want. Yeah. People were trash talking the book earlier today, for what it's worth. I don't know. What? I, so many book haters, man. I think we just have... Okay, <laughs> I thought Kakao was... I just saw the worst before I saw what kind of category that was. So I thought Kakao was requesting Arena and said the worst, as if that was to suggest that that uh, was to mean the book. It's like, oh man, even more book haters. Am I the one of those? What does that mean? I mean, it oh, sounds I'm like Core is not a book hater. I'm not a book hater, no. Of course not. I, lo I love the book. We stand the book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bookworm. Bookworm, exactly, exactly. All come together. We just need more bookworms. Precisely. Precisely. But the worst talismans. Yeah, the worst talismans. So, is there a. Like, do you mean cursed talismans? Do you mean just like any other talisman that we personally think happens to be really bad that may or may not be a cursed talisman? Because once upon a time, as I've said before, once upon a time, it was pretty well established that the consensus opinion for the worst talisman in the game was none other than Bottled Boy. Wait, so this is the worst talisman thing? Yeah. Like, just what we think is the worst? 
Yeah, I, I'm assuming, in our opinion, yeah, in our opinion, what is the worst talisman? Okay, I have a question. Is this worst talisman, like, if, if you just lay out all the talismans and I try to pick the worst generally, is that what this is? Or is it, like, worst talisman on a specific character? Right, because there are some talismans that might be decent on some characters, but are terrible on others. Yeah, exactly. Like, like can I... I will take Vengeful Vow on Savage, and I will take Infernal Bloom on Worm. Yeah, yeah. I literally just do not do anything. That's true. There are... I think, yeah, that doesn't really answer anything. It's kind of in... Like, generally, or... Or Black Hoof type things. Something that's... So it's an either-or question. Is it something that in any circumstance is a bad talisman or something that in a specific circumstance on a specific character happens to be really bad, even if in other circumstances it might be okay. Because there are some talismans that they depend when you when and where you use them, others that are just bad or not so good regardless of the circumstances. Like, prayer beads is generally good like on any character, right? So do you mean like generally as in generally bad on like every character because then it would probably be like a lot of the cursed ones just take the <laughs> just do something bad <laughs> okay we'll find a way there's room for something. interpretation or something that we do that definitely is a different different answer yeah. though i feel like something that we don't like because there yeah, are I like using bad talismans so it's not yeah i mean there's definitely overlap but there are probably some good talismans that for whatever reason people just don't like very much like if we're talking generally bad i think this is probably not used that much and obviously not including the cursed talisman um Uh, this too, as well. Yeah, never really see people take I that. Think those are definitely the bottom four. These, for me, probably like generally just bad. Mm -hmm. Again, unless you're talking about specific setups where, yeah. for example, like you can't have an exploding savage; it just doesn't work. It's bug. Yeah. Lunar so glass it's... as well. Yeah, lunar glass as well. I was thinking. Like this, I'm gonna do this. Like this I, is generally bad, but it's also really bad on a demon. I've seen some people take that. It's, a it's really unusual, bad on a demon but... because your mastery already does it 100% of the time. So I take this. And then I take this and it's redundant. Mm -hmm. Like it's not bugs, it's just redundant. Yeah. Okay, so that's an instance of you taking one that in a specific circumstance does not work well. Yeah. I mean, it's also just a not so it's great talisman. Not very good. But okay, it's 40%. We'll see. Like if it was 100%, maybe it'd be used more. But I don't know. Okay, that's the one you just took. Almost. I don't know when the last time I saw someone take the flask was. Very benefit, very long time ago. I think most benefits on banishments is generally not good, like talisman wise, like the fairy spirit and the. Infernal Bloom even isn't isn't great. Like the Fairy Spirit, not only does this only trigger on Banishment, there's a chance your opponent picks this up. It's not guaranteed to affect you. It could benefit your opponent more than it benefits you. It usually spawns closer to you than it does to your opponent, so chances are you're going to be the one picking up, but it's possible. It could just be a net negative. At, at, well, not only that, but it also spawns every 10. Hmm. 10 seconds. Like, there's just a cooldown on it. Yeah. Um, Frozen I Soul. Did think, I did think about that Iroder, but I mean, I think that's just the cursed talismans, which obviously are generally not good, I would say. Yeah. Well. Frozen Soul, negative 10 may not sound like a lot, and it isn't, but there are very niche circumstances in which that can actually be somewhat significant. Like, it does mean that if you're taking a crone, you can immediately trigger 
hex of victory for a little bit of extra damage on your first score, which otherwise you wouldn't have. And that's that means it's in truth playing for more like 15. Still not great, but it's it's something. Which honestly, 15 points of a difference might be already better than these other things that we're looking at here. So that's why, although this is bad, I'm not quite sure it's as bad as these ones. The Lunar Glass, on almost every exile, it is just an objectively less effective version of Tailwind Crest. Unless, I think on Worms, it might give slightly more speed because of their higher base quickness. If, as what just happened in the previous one, you want to just go all out speed, and you want to have someone on Tailwind Crest, and you want to have also have someone else who's fast, then it means you're going to want to take Lunar Glass. So for that reason, I also hesitate a little bit on that one. Anything else? I mean, the Cursed Talisman's obviously, like we'd said. Or Burst. I feel like it's pretty impractical. Talking about the ones that trigger on, on Banishments. It's not generally held in very high regard. If you use a single... A single ring... You're only getting plus two presence, quickness, and hope. Which is just objectively, you know, six plus six for stats in total, which is just objectively worse than taking plus eight from Tailwind Crest or plus eight from Faith Stone and, and so on and so forth. Plus eight from Scribe Rock. Obviously, if you take a second one of the rings, then you're also getting the infinite stamina and it becomes substantially better. But that is technically another way in which a single ring could be worse. And then as we were saying before, there are some things like the Vengeful Vow doesn't work specifically on Savages at all. There are some instances where if you take Typhoon Bottle, if you have a Worm, it's almost completely useless. Yeah. So that's another niche one, but there are some situations where what would normally be a very solid Talisman can become much, much worse. Also taking, it's again, there's also redundant cases where you're taking Typhoon Bottle on Numbing Gust Sap. Mm -hmm. True, true. So you have a Numbing Gust Sap and you have a Worm, <laughs> you're basically bricking a mastery and you're bricking a talisman slot, so maybe I'll go for that. That's that's pretty serious commitment right there. So that's that specific set of circumstances in which this is bad, but it's uh, I might have wanted to do that, but let's see. So then I guess I'll give you the type. Boom bottle, unless I have reason why it makes more sense to put one of these guys on you. Like a banishment one on a worm. Because like, like a typhoon bottle can be useful on a worm. Like it can it can actually affect it, right? The the match. It could affect it's it's unlikely, but it could. Because if you kill the worm last Yes, no, it, it is possible. it's possible. It is possible. I don't mean to say it's not possible, but it's very uncommon that it becomes a factor. But Infernal Bloom is just completely useless on a worm. It just doesn't do anything. Mm hmm Yeah, maybe I'll put this on someone else. Yeah, so one ring, Emmy does still give you some stats. It's not as good as the other pure stat-boosting talismans, because those give a total of plus eight, whereas one ring gives just plus six. Obviously, if you get the second ring, then suddenly it becomes much, much better. This does not stack with my passive, so this is another redundant thing. It's like, this does not stack with the shared tendency. Mm -hmm. Sandra. Okay, so I'll take... I guess I'll take the... Sap now, and I'll go down for Numbing Gust, and that's where the Numbing Gust plus the Talisman that I just took on my war... Or actually, did I take it? The Typhoon Bottle? Or did I say I was going to leave it? I said I was going to leave it. So this, Watch. this is redundant. Watch we develop some new meta with this match. <laughs> find out something crazy. Yep. I mean, like we said, it turns out that uh, the Bottom Void was considered the single worst talisman for a long time. That's true. The Bottom Void was considered bad for all you new kids. It took a lot of effort to <laughs> from F tier to S tier to its own tier in S. Solo tier. So I feel like Frozen Soul is better than some of the other ones we've been looking at. Yeah. 
at least in some situations, you can get some additional benefit. I think benefit one out of ring is still better than a lot of these. Though. It probably it's still is. It's on the lower half for sure. I feel like, but it's there are probably worse ones out there. I want to kind of exclude the cursed talismans. Yeah, I feel like that's just too obvious, right? Like obviously yeah. the cursed talismans come with a big downside. Everyone knows that. There are some situations in which they're worse than others, but the person who does not vanish well. I want to go like this and go with this, but I guess you could use the. If you went right side mastery on the curve, if you went left side mastery with it, then yeah. I mean, same reason why I was thinking about putting that on the worm. I want to kind of differ from you as well. Yeah, let's try to mix it up a bit. I'll do I'll do worm with infernal. Wait, did you do infernal bloom? You did. Uh, I did on my worm, didn't I? I mean, you could do Bottled Void on a character like- You could do Bottled Void on Orlek. If you really wanted to. And have no way to get Orlek back, and they're just like, Well, I mean, it's good luck having I that do anything. I, I, I already took, um, Sacred Bond, so... Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll do this on Savage, actually. Okay, yeah, I was thinking about doing that, but if you take that... Okay. Someone should go that route. So this just flat out doesn't work. It should, but it's- I think it's technically a bug. Well, yes, it's technically a bug. It's possible that... Well, because it does show the trigger, but mm -hmm. it is possible that they did it because of false step. But I think uh, I think it would be interesting if they if they didn't... Uh, if they we took that, if we fixed it. Mm -hmm. You can have false step, false step uh, exploding savages. I think that's something interesting that can happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of Vengeful Vow because you just did that would, the reason why That would actually that. make me not necessarily play Bottle Void false step all the time because then I could choose to do... It, jump in, explode, yeah. yeah. Jump in, explode, still, and still... Come back. Point. I mean, it's basically like a... A total... Yeah. It's the same effect at the end of the day that you're looking it's for with Bottle effect, Void. Yeah. It's almost like a... Feels like a better version, because you're trying to get the banishments with that stuff from the Bottle Void triggering. Yeah, but this just yeah. comes with the banishment built in. Well, the, the Bottle Void helps with um, Sacred Bond as well. Mm. Whereas like you don't true, if true. you don't go if you don't go bottle void you don't necessarily have to tie savage to a sacred bond like I don't have to take mm -hmm. that at all yeah take something else. gives you more flexibility yeah okay so we've focused it feels like primarily on specific talismans that don't work in specific circumstances more so than just a general this talisman is bad regardless of the circumstance so I'm gonna see if they have other ways in which things are just bad. With also, a specific we didn't really setup. Touch on legendary talismans. I was thinking of that when you were looking at your cur. Yeah, I was thinking like I think. That, Show me your I mean, is interesting, but I don't know. If you go right side cur, yeah, there's something to be said for it. But most of the time, you're trying to go left side cur. It, it does catch people off guard. It say. does. It definitely does, especially because you don't see it very often. So uh, people are like, wait, what? What is this? I've never seen it before. People just die, run into it and die. It's yeah. Kaelinor's Anklet, we actually saw, I think it was Anor, took this voluntarily earlier today. It's just total, total unknown. And it depends a lot on the map. For like big open maps, there's almost no way to benefit from this. For small confined maps with lots of obstacles, which I think is the circumstance in which Anor used it, maybe it's still a roll of the dice. You never quite know if you're going to get decent value out of it or not, though, which is the primary reason why I think most people don't take it. And also because savages tend to be offensive Exiles, not defensive exiles, and this is a defensive talisman. So if you're taking this, it means you're not taking something like quick throw, long throw, banishing throw, stuff like that. Prayer beads, all the void even. So let's see, what else of the more nuanced variety we have here? Did you go? Did you go with the flask plus? A, uh... Yeah, I went flask plus okay. nomad with the tenacity. Okay, so I'm gonna put that away then. What were the other things we were talking about? Oh, I was saying, maybe I'll do Bottle Void on Orlek. Because I have no way to get him back. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And that means I can trigger this once every 30 seconds. And maybe something will happen when I do this. But probably not. And if it whiffs, then I have to wait another 30 seconds for it to happen again. And it's probably not going to do anything again. At that point, the round is probably over. And I'm wasting a talisman slot on an exile in that case when there are a bunch of other things I would rather have an Orlek, like 
prayer beads like or, Star Splinter. Or what you could do is put lunar glass on like a sap. Or... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's almost also, no benefit yeah, at all in that case. Yeah. I think in both situations, you're talking about like very, very marginal value in either of those. I'll go for this, though. Don't have the quick throws, so I don't get as much value out of Celestial Spike, which would normally be one of the go-tos for demons. So that really hurts as well. Whereas at least for the, if you did that on a sap, you could basically build your sap the way you normally do it. Like just go full rekindling on a sap. The sap is still serving a purpose. Whereas this is just like Orlek. I don't have a way to get him back. And uh, I don't have the offensive potential you'd normally have with him because I bricked my talisman spot. So he's, uh, he's not doing much at all. Also, also, this is worse because I took a bunch of banishment time adding, like... I oh, the, yes, the perfect. The one and the greater banishment on the, the perfect. Jodario. So in this so specific matchup, even worse. Like 40 seconds. Yeah. So at best, I'm triggering that once every 40 seconds, and that's just not really going to happen. Like, ready? He goes away. 41 seconds for Orlek to come back. Maybe Bottle Boy will trigger. Probably not, though. Well, well done, Lids. <laughs> that was the one circumstance in which Numb and Gus actually can trigger, when Lids just runs into the opposing character with the worm as his last exile. It is a little ironic that uh, Kalimur's Anklet is effective at the Isle of Kalimur, more so than other places, true. I'll avoid proccing any minute now, right? Now that we've called it out, it will obviously trigger immediately. Oh, I need the stamina. Okay, so now Orlek has gone for over 30 seconds once again. Chances of his bottle void being... I mean, it will obviously it will trigger at the end of this 23 seconds, but I have to wait forever for it to do anything. And the chances of Kor actually having someone close enough to Orlek right next to my pyre when that happens is very unlikely. Glorious. Like, it would have to take Kor another 7 seconds to make it here. I have numerous ways in which I'm slowing him down. He can't throw... If he's just chilling here, that's the only way in which Bottle Void would be effective. And Core was very clearly, you know, just trying to demonstrate how it would be ineffective there. No, I was trying to score. Clearly. Yeah, I, I, was, I was keeping competitive. Okay, well, don't don't wait for 27 seconds, though. <laughs> don't, I'm don't to do score. How do I score? <laughs> oh, no! He can't throw! What does he do? Optimal gameplay, obviously. Very clearly. I thought that would hit. Splendid. So you actually plunging is a good idea. Waiting on the world to change. <laughs> and then Kor just vanishes. The person I was waiting that whole time to get back. Lovely. Can 
game. <laughs> so, there's an example of a totally suboptimal talisman selection. But pretty unusual variety, not just a simple, straightforward, well, I'm going to take cursed talismans because they're probably bad. But Chi Chi. All right, now Potato can hop in. Potato's like, see, all I wanted to do was see what the worst possible talismans were so that I never take them, and then I can jump in. The worst right ever seen, correct. Do not ever take any of those talismans in those circumstances. Is the moral of the story. But Potato, it has been a while. It has been a while, right? You were getting some, some computer fixes. And now, perhaps, those have been addressed? Alright. Let's get you in, though. Why don't we get you in? And you can take my spot. Core, I assume you're good to stick around a little while longer? Yeah. Okay, cool. So we can go Potato versus Core in that case. Potato can be Pirates if he wants. Yeah, Potato, who do you want to be? Four has volunteered to allow the pyre hearts on your part, if you would like. Pyre hearts is good? Okay. No worries, we'll keep it as is then. So this will be Potato's first match of the night, so maybe we give Potato a little bit of time to warm up. Potato says he's rusty. Or we could be cruel and, uh, you know, immediately break out a bunch of very specific and difficult rights. You know, do things like say that Potato must use exclusively the most useless of talismans like we just did yeah and let's uh let's reset the stage as well good call rage of demons okay don't think we've or we certainly haven't had that requested today i don't even know if we've heard it maybe we have anything else on top of the song Looks like that'll be all. Oh, actually, can someone just confirm real quick to make sure that Core is still player one and Potato is player two? That you, Core? Yeah, that's me. Okay. Looks like we're all good then. Let's get started. Oh, it looks like you are still player two. Wait. Oh, my controller's still plugged in. My controller is no longer plugged in. Hopefully, hopefully, Potato is fine then. All right, we'll check in just a second. Isle of Kalimer. And the Rage Demons. We were just talking about Isle of Kalimer. Now, is this reason enough for someone to break out Kalimer's anklet? The talisman we were saying is usually not all that effective. Okay, can Potato move here, or do I need to mess around on remote play? I may need to mess around on remote play. Let me fix up remote play. Let's do that. In theory, may have fixed it. There we go. Yeah, I mean, there are the songs in the campaign that are specifically just for one moment, right? Like Night Howlers. Most of, most of the ones that have lyrics outside of Never to Return, although that obviously has different iterations. Whereas the team themes you hear every time you play that team so usually that means you're hearing those a lot. Then again, technically speaking, is there any way in which you can play the tempers more than one time? Well, you can still play the tempers post first liberation, right? Can can you? Now I forget. Right, Hallers does play twice. I can think of the first instance, but I can't think of the second then. Yeah, I don't- I can't think of the second time. When does it play the second time around? I mean, there's a time when you encounter the Night Howlers. Gilman tutorial plays really? Huh. 
That's Night Howlers. Is it really? Wow. I did not remember that. It's kind of similar circumstances, actually. Obviously, not from a plot standpoint, but from a, a gameplay standpoint. It's a, uh, here, learn how to play this new character, and specifically learn how to play this new character when you have some enemies that you have to chase down and banish. That's actually kind of cool. There's some consistency there. But yeah, I did not realize that. But anyways, here we go with our first matchup between Tor and Potato. It's been a while since we last had Potato on, but good to have him back. And he's getting things started with a 20 damage plunge here from Pamathon. She had prayer beats, so she is coming back. Shoulder smash gets rid of her though, but she comes back quickly with the web lanthorn. Down she goes. Excuse me, goes once again. Snadra, shoulder smashes one defender. Gets the orb back, but goes down. Messenger Imp, blocked. Banishes the defender. That brings back Gilman with his Valiant Return. His throw, just short. Four, biding some time. But has that portal. And puts his exile directly on top of that portal to create the portal with an automatic plunge setup. With whoever he'd like, it was Snatter in that instance. She plunged for 20 and she actually leached for 10 as well. So despite what the voice tells you, trying to make it sound like the game is tied right now, it is not. The voice, uh, not so great when it comes to taking into account the leech that Snatter just had. Potato. Oh, Core once again setting up that portal run on top of the pyre, but it isn't going to matter if Potato scores here, as that would have reset the portal anyway. Or the old fashioned way. Getting rid of all the defenders with Snadra. And so that's an uncontested 20 point throw with once again 10 leech. Potato. With Pamatha, lunges for 20, and as we have established, she will be back with prayer beads here. Snadra switches in, trying to set up the big power cast, but she goes down actually. Pamatha again for Potato. The throw is short and intercepted. Cole on the counter, lunges with his harp for 20. Down goes Potato's Pamatha, and Potato's Tizo. Potato defenseless here. Time for Core. Once again, going with Snadra, because with her leech, she's technically on net his highest damage dealer. 20 points of damage, 10 points of leech. Snadra again, and that'll do it. Good game. GG. H-H. Mm, that's a first. Until the next right. We drop in Headhunters? Headhunted is what it means. I hunted Potato's head. Or it means that you may have just gotten the be best item in Path of Exile. It's a pretty rare drop, though. It's actually League specific, so I doubt you got it. I know it'd be pretty unlikely, but I, I suppose it's possible. Lin's Headhunter isn't even the best item in Path of Exile anymore. How do you sit? Look. <laughs> All right. Much better items. Path of Exile Two doesn't exist yet, Core. It's coming out soon. Though. It is though. It is though. You play yeah. Poe, Core? I play a very little of it. Okay. I think there are, there are a few people who have played a little bit of Path of Exile in chat, but anyways, <laughs> that's all an aside. That's all an aside. But let us know if there is anything that uh, you'd like to see for this next one. Lids, Path of Exile was the first game you played on this channel. True. True story. True story. This used to be a Path of Exile only channel. Was it the vids thing? Was it the vids? Is that what happened? <laughs> uh, well, it was all Path of Exile. Then I started doing stuff on YouTube in addition to that, starting with Pyre. It was the first 
game I played on YouTube, then Hades, then started doing Witcher stuff. And one and the Witcher, rather than recording that, actually, I did start Witcher 1 and Witcher 2 just going straight to YouTube. But once I did Witcher 3, I streamed that rather than just recording straight to YouTube. And so then it got into a, well, okay, if we're streaming Witcher one day of the week, then that means one less day to do Path of Exile and just sort of started to teeter more toward the, the YouTube side of things or stuff that we stream on Twitch is with the intention of eventually posting things on YouTube and that's just not really something that Path of Exile is great for because Path of Exile, fun game, but it is very repetitive and doesn't have a lot of very distinct moments where you say like, oh, I'm gonna watch a, a YouTube video about the hour two of seven of Lid's Path of Exile stream because it's, it's just not really something that is as uh, easily discernible as that. Also, my computer started to have trouble running it because uh, the game is horribly optimized. So I used to be able to run it, but for some reason, now I can't run it very well while still streaming. That being said, with regard to Pyre, not seeing any requests at the moment, but let us know, chat, if you have anything else in mind for this. Please, what if they did a Path of Exile themed team? Great suggestion, chat. Oh, random song, yes, good call. Reset that. No, but Lids, they, they've they only played a little bit of Path of Exile. For all we know, Potato hasn't played any Path of Exile. How could he possibly create a team based on a game that he doesn't know? Fair point. And that's why, perhaps, no one actually requested that. It is a really fun game, though, for anyone who's interested. It is also free, or at least free to play with some premium, uh, like, uh, just MTXs for uh, visual stuff. So no, like, data win things, which is nice. But yeah, cool to try it out. It is, I do really like it. It is a lot of fun, but as I said, unfortunately, uh, it is not well optimized. So my computer, apparently, for some reason, used to be able to run it, but it no longer can. But if you're interested in stuff like, uh, it's very similar to Diablo 2, Diablo 3 to a slightly lesser extent. You know, like an RPG sort of dungeon crawler uh, looter. And it's a lot of fun. It's similar to Diablo, right? Yeah. It's, uh, many people call it sort of like the spiritual successor to Diablo 2. Because Diablo 2 into Diablo 3 kind of deviated, went a little more casual, if you will. A little more just like basic, um, you know, general, targeting the general population rather than going to the more hardcore gamers, whereas Path of Exile goes the more hardcore gamer route, because it's a, it is a complex game. So countless mechanics that are really, really in depth. They take a lot of time to master, which is hard for new players, but it is a lot of fun. If you start to get the hang of it and you wanna dive into those details, then there's a lot of stuff to uh, to get uh, to get some experience on and, and start to master. But we have our own path of exile to walk down. Also, for what it's worth, in on this channel, I almost exclusively play games in which people are exiles. This is this is not wrong. Path of Exile, Pyre, what else? Uh, there were other ones. Gwent. Uh, maybe Hades to a certain extent. Exiled for well, sort of. Darkest Dungeon are they exiled in there? Sort of, maybe, kind of. But even before, know, okay, there were there were other games. I forget what else. But there are definitely other games I've played where Exile is very much the theme of the game. Oh, in The Witcher, in some circumstances, sort of. But anyways. Anyways, for this match! Chat's like, Lids, when are we actually going to get back to playing Pirate? Now, is the answer. Now. Ooh. Well. Well. 
We have been to the pit once or twice a day. However, I am not sure that we have satisfied, satiated our thirst for the memes in this arena in particular. Four leads with Gilman. Now, often the best characters for memeing in this arena tend to be the kind that Potato just took. While bouncing on either the jumps or the throws from the Savages, it is possible to do that kind of thing with other Exiles as well, but the Savages tend to be the most capable of that. And a crone, which does have a long range jump and throw, so it is possible we might see Potato go for it with either that Savage and or that crone. And all right, well, Core is breaking out the bottom void strats here. So that is a meme, perhaps not the precise meme that I had anticipated, that I had alluded to in this instance, but a meme no less. All right, Webland Thorn in for the last spot for Potato. And let us see what exactly our players had in mind here. <laughs> and Pyre knew, or at least Pyre is encouraging our players to embrace the memes here as we get the Falcon Ron song as Core starts things off with the 20 damage throw from the stowaway. Gertrude, she's banished. Everyone, seemingly, is banished. Seeds chance active, so extra damage on the throw if it lands, but it's short. Potato through the portal. Over to the stowaway. Through the portal she goes. It did bounce a little bit there, but didn't have the range. And here is Kor's counterattack. Bertrude. Off the wall, but still banished. Four with plenty of time to set up the Seize Chance throw for 25. Bertrude, banished. Tizo, banished. The Stowaway returns. There's the Bald Void. Getting rid of, or dispossessing, Potato of the Orb. Gilman. Lock, but gets the throw off. And it does land. Slightly less than maximum, 13 rather than 15 damage in this case. Bertrude hops over one defender, but gets banished by the second. Stowaway down for core. Snadra down for core. But there's a bottom void triggered. Everyone was banished, but Gilman returned with his Valiant return. Banishments everywhere, and core does just enough to get the bottom void off. Potato still had it back until Snadra intervened. No one for Potato. So 15 damage with the throw drops Potato down to seven, meaning one score, almost surely all that Core needs here. Throw from the stowaway is intercepted by Snadra. Now it's Core stowaway. Don't think that was quite a bottle or a false step in that instance. Orb inadvertently hits Core's pyre, bounces out. Core picks it back up with the Snadra. Stowaway misses the mark, but follows in for the winning plunge. GG. All right, let's head on back. And let us know, chat, if there is anything that you'd like to see for the next one. Clearly. From worst to first.
Not seeing anything at the moment, though. Oh, hold on. Default skills of preset masteries. Okay. Don't see that every op every uh, match, but uh, does mean basically each character, yes, has a predetermined allocation of masteries, some of which have more than others. And uh, for those that have a lot of masteries, sometimes even means that their stats are modified as well. For instance, I think Snadra has four masteries, and for that reason, has her glory reduced. I think that's also the case for Ignarius, at least has reduced glory, but I don't remember how many masteries he has. So there is a difference between different members of the same class for that reason. Uh, that does not work with Customize Off. I don't think. Actually, I'm not sure we've tried this before. Actually, yeah, it should, because it just it just means that it randoms the exiles and then whatever they have for their preset masteries. I guess yeah, random exiles, but preset masteries and random talismans as well. I guess that's still possible. I guess that still works. Yeah, it takes away the sort of takes away the uncertainty from the masteries, but still don't know exiles, don't know talismans. It just doesn't <laughs> randomly pick masteries. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but I, I'm not sure that anyone has memorized all the preset masteries anyway yeah, so that so we can guess this is a it's a preset mastery test <laughs> pretty much pretty much okay i uh, we might need to restart uh versus mode for preset masteries i think we might but we'll see most likely see if it freezes here i think it will yeah okay it's okay, now we do this, and now it should work. What, do you have to get out of versus mode, or do you just say Uh, I think you just need to end the right. I think you just need to restart it. But you might be right. No, you're right. You're right. But now it should work. All right, I think it's Blade of Lou. Or it's two worms and a cur. For Potato, it's a crone and two saps. Okay, it is Gilman, Deluge, and Barker for core. It is Palmus, Manly, and Bertrude for Potato. So as we were saying, technically speaking, the Masteries should be locked in from the preset Masteries, but Talismans are unknown, and of course, no uh, characters were unknown until... We found out right here. It's 25 damage on the plunge. No prayer beads on Bertrude. She's gone for this round. Or It's Deluge this time. The throw might be short. It is. Almas. So here's the thing. Potato, after plunging with Bertrude, is not going to get her back. So needs to find some way to manufacture some offense out of the saps. Otherwise, eventually, Kor is going to get a plunge here. There's a numbing gust, so we know that much about one of the saps. Oh, and Kor was perhaps thinking about trying to sneak in a throw there once one of the saps had returned, once he was allowed to throw, but opted for the plunge nonetheless. Astral Eye. Okay, a little bit of a bonus there for Kor. Extra eight damage on that plunge. But notably means he did not have the Kerr 5 damage mastery in the first spot on the right side of the tree. Otherwise, that would have been 28. Or 15 on that throw. Yeah, gonna take the preset mastery SAT, exactly. This is the test. Exploding saplings, at least on one of Potato's saps there. Dying flame, so extra damage for Potato as well. Both players get a little bit of additional value. That throw will still land here for 15. And that means things are just about tied up. But of course, Potato does have two Savages and therefore may have some rekindling here. Gilman sneaks around the other side. His throw... 15, the maximum. Drops Potato down to 17, which means Barker has enough damage. Not impossible with a seize chance for Core to get rid of the starting pyre life with one of the worms, but it would require 
one of those seized chances. There is the extra damage on the Bertrude Plunge. 13, or rather 33, but as we were saying before, that means Potato is now relying on the Saps for offense here. And if Potato can make that happen, then that could be all Potato needs here, as it's unlikely that Core has Rekindling. Oh, but yeah, the, the Worm damage, not quite enough. Potato's still holding on here. We think it's likely that Potato at least have some Rekindling. But for those of you who have passed your Preset Mastery SAT, perhaps you can say so more definitively. Did I say two Savages? Two Saps. And two Worms. But the Crone is back. Oh, and it looked like she was in there. It really looked like she was in. Potato with the throw. And it is done. A savage throw from the Sap. GG. Thus end this night's proceedings. Well played. And there you have it, the rare rare match in which we had the combination of both preset masteries and customized turned off i'd be curious to see if we ever do this more often or if any of you guys in chat start to do this yourselves if any sort of preference starts to build between a pure customize off match with the usual four masteries versus customize off with preset masteries that is quite new. But, I mean, we see a lot of Customize Off. Might we build a preference for Customize Off with Preset Masteries? I don't know. Possibly. Maybe eventually, in that case, we'd figure out what the Preset Masteries are. Maybe. I don't know. That's uh, it's asking a lot of us, Potato. It's asking a lot of us. I don't know. Not sure if we're ready for that just yet. Okay, three total masteries, two max on a given exile. At least to some degree, yeah. Okay. So I guess that means we can put this to three here. Or actually, put this to two here. Because this is per exile. So three total masteries across your entire team. If you want, you could go one apiece. Or you could go two masteries on one exile and one mastery on the other. What are the others? We should probably turn customize back on, unless that is something that you guys would like to reactivate here. Except it doesn't really work with Core's request, so I think we're going to have to keep customize on here. But we could still do exiles and talismans, arenas and songs, if any of those things are of interest. Oh, okay. There's a monkey wrench. Only cursed talismans. We did a match specifically with bad talismans, the worst talismans, earlier today, but we made a point of choosing things other than the cursed talismans because those felt like, yeah, I mean, they're usually not held in very high regard, but that goes without saying they're cursed talismans. But now we'll see them. And there are some circumstances in which those cursed talismans can be maybe not the best talismans in the game, and that's why we tend not to see them, but there are some instances in which they can be decent. <laughs> Potato disagrees, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Maybe there will be some pleasant surprises here. Let's hop in. Ooh. Okay. The Cairn, the Hockey Puck Arena. Who shall conduct the rites? So Cursed Talismans only. There are some Cursed Talismans you can't use on some exiles, so bear that in mind. Or goes two masteries and Black Hoof there on Gilman. So remember, three masteries total across your entire team. You can either go one mastery apiece on each of your exiles or go for two and one. But 
but triple is not allowed. Or triple on one XL was specifically disallowed. Tato may follow suit here. But no goes Blackheart on a single Mastery Jody, so she may come back with Infinite Stamina, which of course, on a Demon, when it works, could be very effective. Black Claw keeps the aura around the character when they have the orb, but they can't cast. And so, on a character with a big aura, that can be effective. So Kor has used two masteries thus far. Did not put any on his second character. Potato has only used one. She does have a little more to spare here. Just laugh, last laugh, work with Hoof. Oh, I'm sure we've asked ourselves this question before. I don't remember what the answer is, though. Uh, there's, it's definitely known. I just don't know the answer. Yeah, but we have definitely tested before. I want to say no, but again, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't remember. Does anyone in chat remember? Baylor and Orr. Black Hoof plus last laugh. Does that work? Does anyone remember? I know someone has tested this at some point. Uh, yeah, I know it's a known thing. I just don't know what the answer is. You can try it. Just like... yeah, you could. You can learn. Today. <laughs> Anora says she doesn't remember either, but I wrote her might know. Not sure if I wrote her still hanging out in chat, but he might have an answer. Oh god, the name is mixed up anyway. Tizo. I wrote her does not know I, either. The one that I did, the not hoof, the claw. So Kor will also go Blackheart on a demon, or the chance of getting that scary infinite stamina demon. That makes sense. Right, then it is a Black Claw Volfred, so he can't cast, but he'll maintain his aura when he has the orb. So here we go. Three masteries total across the entire team on both sides, and only the Cursed Talismans. And you just saw there, there are certainly some significant downsides that may play a factor here in this match when it comes to the effects of those Cursed Talismans. Black Heart means infinite stamina here on Jody, so that's the plus side of the black card, and it can be very, very good on a demon when that works. But Kor cannot pick up the orb with his Gilman there. Or that might have been Potato with his Tizo. Either way, Wolfred can, and he has time to throw this one in uncontested for 25. Okay, did both players use Black Hoof in their opening spot? It's a bold strategy. I think so. Four. Not quite enough time for a fully charged throw, but cuts it short at 23. Big banishment's there from Gilman, but then he goes down. Here's Jody. She's banished. Imp versus Imp. Blackheart does trigger for Potato, but it's not going to matter here as Potato, or rather, Core is able to plunge. 
for 15 with his imp. Now, Core trying to take advantage of his infinite stamina Jody, although that time has expired now. So back to normal Jody, and well shielded from Potato. Does have a portal, but it's not enough to avoid Gilman's slash there. And there is an infinite stamina Jody helping Potato to get to the orb and get to the pyre more quickly. That drops Core down to 15. Down goes Jody. Both players not able to pick up the orb with those characters. Or can pick it up with his messenger imp, though. Here comes the speedy Jody. She's stopped. Gilman still can't pick it up. He can juggle the orb, though. Wolfred downed. Or blocks. And now banished. Here's Jody for Potato. Oh, double banishment from Core, but can't pick it up with Gilman. And with Jody, though. Oh, nearly faked out Volfred there. Oh, and there is the downside of the Black Hoof. When you don't get infinite stamina, you turn into a defenseless Howler. Technically still possible to score with one. And that's what happened to Core as well. But you cannot defend. Or has it back here. Can't pick it up with Gilman. Try to pass it to him. But in doing so, just made the orb show up right next to his pyre. Jody snipes Jody. Four. Blocks. That's an infant stamina Jody for Potato, but she goes down. And Core's turned into a Howler. Core has the orb here, and an opportunity to score uncontested for 15. And that drops Potato down to 17. So both players, low enough pyre life. The one score may be all that it would take here. For Core, a little more restrictive in that a normal damage worm score would not be enough, just barely. The same could be said for Messenger Imp. It might need to be Jody for him. Here she is, and there it is for the winning plunge. The game. GG. Definitely a different feel to those types of matches. Yeah. The right is the worm was banishing some people. Oh, Potato thought he had the orb at the end. Sad face. Until the next right. Okay, and tell you what, let's reset ourselves. But otherwise, it's starting to get a little late here, so I was thinking, what if we make this next one our penultimate right, the last right in which we take requests from chat, and then after that, of course, we'll go into our final right, our liberation right. How does that sound? Yeah, that's good. I Sounds good? Good more. Okay. So in that case, if there is anything else that you want to see between Core and Potato, this is your last chance to make it happen. So let us know. Last call from chat, our last opportunity to uh, request anything of our two players here. So let us know. But in the absence of that, of course, we'll just have them take whatever they want to take. Hold on. I wrote her choose an exiles. Triple cur. Okay. Triple cur on both sides. Anything in addition to that? Or will that be all? Potato requests an arena and says cringe. I'm gonna guess book. I 
didn't want to say it, but uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty sure that's what he meant. Okay, book it is. Glorious tradition as well. It's the song, and now everything's coming flooding in. A <laughs> double glorious tradition request. Okay, well, we can definitely make that happen. Don't worry. That much we can definitely arrange. Okay. In that case... Wait, so are you going to Volfrit? Are you going to um, do a Tariq bot request and put two glorious traditions on at the same time? Ooh. I'm not sure we've ever done that before. Because we can't do the next one because it's the liberation right? True. True. Then again, uh, we can't really synchronize the Tariq bot Glorious Tradition. Okay. Just go for a super, stuff. super scuffed double Glorious Tradition. What do we say, chat? Tato says yes. I'm looking mostly for Anor and Kakao because those are the two that requested it. Do we want a scuffed Glorious Tradition in game combined with Glorious Tradition from Tariq bot? Even if it is going to be woefully synchronized. Super glorious and super tradition. It sounds like that may be of interest. That may be of interest. How dare you try to put Trieste's plume on a curve? How dare you? Titan Tooth, that's fine. I know the triple hopping curves may seem like they have wings, and in truth, they can, at times, seemingly take flight. You're not wrong. But nonetheless, they cannot use Triestus Blue. It's really sad Kurs don't have a salute skill. They have a pretty good Yeah. Skill. I don't know what it would be. That'd be kind of an interesting thought experiment. What would a Kur salute do? Are they the only ones that don't? Nomads don't either, do they? Did I say only ones? I don't think I said only ones. Potato did. Or rather, uh... Oh, are you asking? No, nomads I... don't as well. Is that it? Nomads don't. Demons do. Yeah, I think it's just nomads. And worms. worms do. Imps do. Harps do. Oh. Saps do, crones do. Yeah, I think those two are the only ones. I mean, imagine if rather than sacred bond for nomads, with your salute, you brought back a random ally. Could that be canceled? Then that's kind of OP. <laughs> it could be OP. I mean, sacred bond is really strong too. This is taking away sacred bond in order yeah. to make room for that. But it's not like an instant <laughs> jail, jail to free card. Free at. Yeah, I mean, you have to go through the animation it's still, jail but. Free card. Cancel salute into salute. I don't know what it would be for. What you could do for Curse, because I mean, at least that's thematically consistent with what the Nomads do. I don't know what the most fitting thing would be for Kurs. Okay, but before you take this last Kerr, Potato, I am going to tab out to get Tariq Bot going, because it seemed like, it seemed like people were saying they wanted the scuffed Double Glorious Tradition. It seemed like that was the case. It's not going to be synchronized at all, so it's going to sound terrible. But we're going to do it anyway. All right, go for it. Oh, also, hold on. Let me get chat back up. Now go for it. I mean, there are definitely songs that I think would be worse to be poorly synchronized than this. I think a poorly synchronized thrash pack would be just absolute lunacy. That wah, 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 not synchronized would be pretty crazy.
It's gonna sound beautiful, says Potato. We're about to find out. We're about to find out. All right, so the double Titan Tooth curves stun each other. And it's Potato who plunges here first for 20. And this time I think both players might have switched out of the stun. And so now it's Core plunging for 20 with his Kerr. Double Titan Tooth. Core switches out. Explosive Temper actually went a little bit down the right side there. And I mean, it worked out for him. Unconventional approach, but hey. The results speak for themselves, perhaps. There's a triple hopping Kerr, though. Jumping in for 20. Or again, this time with Barker. He hops in. It's another 20. And that means one more of those may be all the core needs here. Here's Potato. As he hops in for 20. But Core hops in for the winning plunge. GG. All right, and let's head on back. Yeah, as I said, I feel like it's probably not as noticeable, the double Glorious Edition, compared to other songs. I feel like it would be more obvious if we duplicated a different song. There's your double scuffed Glorious Edition. And now, now we are moving on to our final run of the night, our Liberation Rite, which means, of course, no request for this one. Because we will be at the Fall of Solium. We will have, we'll go the Pyre Hearts version of Never to Return, as we usually go for player two. And we'll have both players take their preferred teams here to finish things off in style. So, without further ado, let's get going. As a Nightwings player, Anor would argue that the withdrawn version of Never to Return is best. I do think the withdrawn version is very good. There are, I mean, it's hard to say anything definitively with them because they're all good in their own way. But I do feel like if I'm being particularly critical, the Nightwings version may be relatively low on the list. I hate to do this, but I actually have to go now. Core, no! <laughs> All right, no worries. Let us, in that case, let's let's duck out here. We'll set up a new one. We will need to have someone else hop in to take Core's spot, but uh, thanks for stopping by, Core. Good to have you. Okay, and I think uh, Potato just left. <laughs> potato! <laughs> do we have uh, at least... Can we... Potato, are you still available? Can we get you back in? Was that an accidental disconnect? Because I think what we'd like to do is get Potato in and then just go for getting someone in real quick for a uh, <laughs> an impromptu liberation right, perhaps. But thanks for stopping by, Core. Let's get Potato back. Seems like that was an accidental disconnect there. I mean, yeah, Nor, if you want to hop in, I say let's go for it. Anor, a.k.a. Core 2.0. Let's see. Anor, should we switch you back over to... Oh, well, but then we have Pyre Hearts, Nightwings, which we generally try not to do. What do we want to do there? We want to have someone switch up their teams a bit? Is this too similar?
Potato can go true Nightwings. Oh, wait. Nightwings versus true Nightwings? Yes. Definitely. Definitely. Let's do it. Let's do it. That is a must-see TV event. For sure. Okay, and Anor, we, we should have you on the right controls, right? Let me just make sure. Nope, play is giving you controls. Yes. Okay, because we have not had anyone on mouse keyboard since you got in, right? You were going to say you could go Beyonders. Yes, but then again, like, we can't say no to this, right? Nightwings, true Nightwings. You just can't say no to that. That's just too good to be true. Okay. So in that case, I think now <laughs> we will uh, totally start up what was uh, our originally intended liberation right between Anor and Potato because that that's totally what we had planned for our final ride of the night but anyways anyways without further ado let us begin oh except the, the screen is frozen hold on hold on hold on no not now not now not like this not like this there we go Stand upon the fall of Solium. Here you may step closer to achieving freedom. We soon shall see who is the most deserving. Prepare yourselves, Nightwings. True Nightwings, stand ready. And actually, I forgot to select you or forgot to switch your sigils here. Give me just a second here. Cause an or is not the chastity. You are the Nightwings, and then, oh, nope. You are the Nightwings, and then Potato is no longer the Pyre Hearts. Potato is now the true Nightwings. There we go. Okay, proceed, proceed. So this will, of course, be our final ride of the night, our liberation ride, in which we will have Anor on the left representing the Nightwings, and Potato on the right, representing the true Nightwings. No requests from chat this time. Both players taking their preferred teams, their preferred setups, to finish things off in style. Anor with her go-to nutri nutrition stick Volfred. Not going for the rekindling there, going for numbing gusts and exploding saplings instead. Oh, but look at those rain mints. The rain mints! They're so stylish. They are just so stylish. Headwind. Power casting headwind. Shoulder smashing, actually, rather than the critical strikes there, somewhat surprisingly. Speedy Jody in the last spot for an ore, and then finally for Potato. It'll be a meta Jody. So here we go, our final ride of the night. An ore on the left representing the Nightwings. Potato on the right representing the true Nightwings. Best of luck to you both.
And there it is. GG. Well played, you two. That was, of course, our final run of the night, our liberation right. Thank you, everybody who participated in the right today, and everybody who gave us the request in chat as well. We had at least one or two. It felt like maybe they were first time, if not very rare requests. So always fun to see some of those. I'm going to duck out of Discord, but I will see you guys next week. All right, let's, uh, I think they may have all fled from Steam Remote Play. Honestly, good choice. Good choice if you did. Potato has not yet. Uh, do we hold Potato captive for all of eternity here, like there is no escape? Or do we free Potato from the downside? I guess we'll free Potato. I guess we'll free Potato. Okay, but I'm not quite done with you yet here, chat. Do it! <laughs> do it, I dare you! <laughs> He has been freed. But uh, that was, of course, our final ride of the night, our liberation ride. Thank you, everybody, who participated in the rights today, as well as those who gave us the request in chat as well. This was, of course, Pyre Community Right Night, some multiplayer Pyre, which we're doing every Sunday. And if you're interested in getting more involved in multiplayer Pyre, the best way to do so is naturally by joining the Right Club server, the place for all things multiplayer, multiplayer Pyre, which you can do by clicking on that link right there. My name is Lids. I'm hosting these Right Nights. Like I said, we're doing them every Sunday. In addition to that, we are doing some some new stuff. Fridays, we've started recently doing some Darkest Dungeon, including characters named based on characters in chat. People in chat. You, you know what I mean. Including several people that you've seen here today. Not to mention uh, Anor, Kor, Arumi, and uh, that may or may not have been one of the reasons why we were hoping we might have caught an Arumi setting at some point today, because uh, let's just say we may or may not have unleashed Yeastlock at one point in time. And uh, he has some serious, serious explaining to do, as he may have nearly wiped out our entire team. So, uh, you know, you know, things like that are happening on Fridays. Then Saturdays is Mass Effect 3 multiplayer days. And then Sunday is, of course, Fire multiplayer days with Right Night. Other than that, Lids Vids on YouTube as well, posting the VODs for all those streams. So if you missed anything, you can catch it there as well. Like, say, for example, maybe someone summoned Yeastlock and got your character killed from a Darkest Dungeon stream, and you want to know how the heck did that happen, well, uh, well, that is one way you could do that. Also, doing some Gwent videos on YouTube, the Witcher-themed card game, new events for that coming out every week, so lots of stuff for us to experiment with there, as well as some Thronebreaker, which is the Gwent campaign. That's one in which we're exiled. That's one in which we're exiled. Add that one to the list. Okay, as we were talking about a few hours ago. <laughs> but, uh, there's that. Then we're also doing Transistor. Or at least we finished streaming Transistor, but we're posting the VODs for that still on YouTube. Then, I think that's about it for all that stuff. But if you haven't done so yet already, of course, you can hit the follow button to get a notification for another live. That's, that's words for when I go live. Uh, there. But, in addition to that, the, uh, you can also follow me on Twitter, at LidsVids. I post there when I'm live as well. But the best place to stay up to date on all things Lids is actually by joining my own Discord server. Which you can do by clicking on that link right there. That's going to be it for me for tonight, so thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the stream, and I'll catch you next time.